Bitcoin, MyMagicMud.com. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You can help new minds find liberty. Chip in at LRN.FM. From Keen in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $230. Antiwar.com reports deployed last week to the Yemeni coast on the pretext of the proximity of the convoy of Iranian cargo ships whose destination was never known. The USS Theodore Roosevelt and a series of other U.S. warships have begun to leave Yemeni waters, returning to their long-standing position parked off the Iranian coast. The Pentagon insisted that during the deployment there was no communication with the Iranian cargo ships and bragged that the Iranian convoy turned away from Yemen before the U.S. warships did. The move away suggests U.S. ships won't be engaging any further in the naval blockade of Yemen, though so far they were only confirmed to have carried out a single boarding of a Panamanian cargo ship they falsely accused of having Iranian weapons on board. The Iranian cargo convoy remains shrouded in mystery, however, as it never went to Yemen and no one has ever publicly said where it actually was going. Though the U.S. is trying to present the ships not going to Yemen as some sort of military achievement, it was never more than U.S. conjecture that the ships were heading there anyhow. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports an Atlanta teen who burned over 70% of his body after two friends threw a pot of boiling rice on him while he was asleep is in a medically induced coma. Damon Clay, age 17, was hospitalized after two people who claimed he had stolen a video game console attacked him earlier this week while he was sleeping on a couch. Quintavious Barber, 19, and Malik Morton, 18, were arrested for aggravated assault and child cruelty. Family members said Clay was recently released from jail after a burglary conviction and turned over to a supervising nonprofit organization, but a minister who told a judge he would shelter Clay provided no guidance. They added that instead of a a promised group home, Clay lived with an assortment of friends and relatives. Clay's aunt said he didn't have any supervision. None. Doctors at Grady Memorial Hospital said more surgery is to be expected after Clay is removed from a ventilator on Sunday. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeracy supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. The Guardian reports Switzerland is the happiest nation on earth, but Nordic nations still take up half of the top 10 places on an exhaustive and increasingly influential index of global well-being. In the third world happiness report, now encompassing 158 nations, Denmark slipped to third behind both Switzerland and Iceland, with Norway, Finland, and Sweden also near the top. The United Kingdom is 21st, one place higher than in the second edition in 2013. The study ranks countries by by a series of factors, some nationally determined, for example, per capita GDP and healthy life expectancy. Others are worked out through information gathered via Gallup World Poll, a vast system of surveys that began in 2005 and now covers more than 160 countries. The idea of assessing population by contentment rather than just wealth has proved influential and is promoted by both the United Nations, whose Sustainable Development Solutions Network publishes the index, and the Organization for Economic 
economic cooperation and development. While the Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan remains best known for its gross national happiness credo, David Cameron was another pioneer in 2010 instructing the Office for National Statistics to collate data on contentment. The latest index offers few surprises with the top nations. The first five are Switzerland, Iceland, Denmark, Norway, and Canada. The United States ranked 15th with New Zealand 9th and Australia 10th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In an unsettling video released over the web this week, Buddhist extremist cell Kamathana vowed to unleash a massive wave of serenity and nirvana all across the West. Members of the group threatened to implement such severe measures as tranquil chanting, meditation sessions, and eye-opening koans, and assured U.S. leaders of the group's absolute commitment to engulfing Americans in complete and unyielding enlightenment. Here now is a clip from the video. We will not cease until every city, from New York to London, succumbs to a state of spiritual harmony. Prepare yourself. Sources confirm that the Pentagon responded to the film by ordering immediate tactical bombings throughout Tibet. And in tech news, the inventor of the Gromdar says he's determined to put a Gromdar in every American home. In other news, a woman who had almost formed a healthy sense of self joined social media, and an area man can remember exactly where he was and what he was doing when he assassinated John F. Kennedy. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and it is the live Saturday edition of the program. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. Coming up, Sheriff Joe. You know, the America's toughest sheriff. The man who's just so full of himself and has managed to stay in office even after abusing human beings in an obvious manner for decades. He keeps getting reelected by whoever the sick people are that are reelecting him there in the Maricopa County area of Arizona. He's gone to court. There's a contempt trial going on against Sheriff Joe this past week in Phoenix. And I want to talk about that because, well, this man is, uh, is a sick puppy. And I think there's some larger issues at play here, namely the fact that he ignored a judge's order to stop uh, his racial profiling, essentially. That's what the basis of the contempt filing has been. We can talk more about that coming up here. We've got Skype, by the way. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm, and you can call toll-free 855-450-FREE. Joining you in studio, Ian here. And Mark. Let's go uh, to, I believe we got uh, Pizza Dude. Yeah, Pizza Dude is in North Dakota, is it? Pizza Dude? Yeah, North Dakota. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, I wanted to call and talk about the button, uh, incrementalism, and uh, trying to understand why people do things. Okay. And so, Well, you know, I think it's important to understand, you know, and I, I've tried to do this with the example of slave owners or the Nazis, that everybody has the best of intentions. And I, I think that's kind of a, an important lesson to, to keep in your mind and... And try to understand that you have to hate the sin, not the sinner, because sinners don't know that they're sinners, right? In, in, a, in a kind of way of thinking about it. Yeah, I think in many ways that's a more effective way to go about it than uh, just sort of uh, lambasting and, and uh, painting people with a broad brush like Ian just did with uh, folks that voted for Joe Apparel. Go ahead. <laughs> well, that is kind of exactly my point. And so coming back to the button, whether you would push it or not. I, the button, button. What now? We have to Which describe button? this button. Yeah, well, the button to end the state. Okay, I, what is the? I just want to make sure we're clear on what this button does, because everybody who's called to talk about this seems to have a slightly different view on what this button will do. This is an imaginary button, obviously, and uh, this would in the cons. This this would be so the state as a concept is an organization that claims a monopoly privilege on the use of violence in a given ma- landmass, right? Um, sure, but okay. I mean, I would, would, and so I guess what I would argue is that it doesn't exist. Anyway, you can't end the state. That's my that's kind of my whole my whole point in, in calling today is to say, hey, there is no such thing as the state. And uh, you guys have said as much before. Right. It's just a bunch of people with intentions in their mind. Well, right? the, the state s- is an idea. Um, so people believe in the idea of the state. It's very real to them. 
Uh, but for those of us who have gone beyond that and understand that the state is just a, an idea that justifies violence against peaceful people or the threat of violence against peaceful people, you know, we don't think it's real, but they certainly do. But you really see it as one idea that that that's kind of my point is that the, there is no idea of the state. No, but nobody supports the state. But what they, oh, yeah, do, they support do I mean, there are people who believe they are the state. I mean, you, if you've ever been prosecuted before in any kind of criminal court, uh, it's the state who's coming after you. And the judge uh, believes he is the court, which is an extension of the state. And the prosecutors are the agents of the state who are doing the prosecuting for and on behalf of this thing called the state, this thing that doesn't exist, but yet they believe they're doing its bidding. See, in this, see, you know, um, uh, there's a saying, and I forget exactly how it goes, but it says, uh, "I don't." Uh, paraphrasing is, "I don't really know why I do the things that I do. I just do them, and then come up with a reason afterwards." And everybody is that way. When you think about it, most of the we, time, yeah, yeah, we act faster than we can come up with rationalizations for them, and then we try to pick it apart afterwards, right? So. I don't know why I do the things that I do. I'm not going to look another human being or set of human beings in the eye and say, you believe in the state and that's why you're doing this, right? I don't think, I think every single one, it's just a bunch of people who have the best of intentions who think, you know what, I'm going to make things better by doing this. And so the idea of ending the state by pushing the button, I think carries with it all these uh, logical fallacies, concepts, and constructs, we can, we can put them together and think about it in our mind. Like we can, we can discuss about what it would be like to be half pregnant, right? But certain things, just because you can string it together as a, as a series of words into a concept, doesn't mean they have meaning. And I don't yeah, think the state yeah. is one of those things. I think you've really put it in the, the right light here because, um, you know, the, the conversation I was having on Wednesday night when this is what you're referring to with uh, Ian and Cantwell is, is that it, you're putting me in a very difficult position because you're asking me to talk about something that is not real, that is entirely fantastic. And the idea that... Uh, that you're talking about the button, not the state? The, well, the button, uh, the state is, uh, I suppose it's, it's real in the sense that uh, people like to use the government government to solve problems because in some cases it can solve problems more quickly and in other cases it solves them less quickly. So for instance, I'll say recycling. Um, people want to see plastics recycled and the marketplace was going to move really slowly on the recycling of plastics because plastics just aren't valuable. They're not that much of a resource as far as getting them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to be very costly. At this point, the recycling programs are up. They've got legs. They might even... Uh, yeah, but they're BS, most of them, right? Uh, they're less BS than they were when Penn and Teller created their BS about them 10 years ago. Why is that? Why are they less BS now? Well, you've got to look at the recycling programs as a whole. They've found things to do with these resources uh -huh. by forcing people into the programs. I mean, you have to understand that force was involved, uh, and they, they now they can use the little pebbles, and they can you know, make different plastics and, and that sort of things with them. And because they force people to do recycling, they can now use the resources that those uh, recycling programs had, whereas previously the resources weren't there. When you had your plastics mixed in with your garbage, it wasn't really a resource because it wasn't valuable enough to go through the garbage and pull the plastics out. Mm -hmm. when the plastics it's still not valuable enough because you don't, you don't really get, uh, you know, the people that are going around and turning in cans, for instance, there's value in certain types of recycling. At least that's what they said on Penn & Teller's BS years ago. Um, and that, you know, there's certain things that are being recycled that is not valuable, that it actually costs more energy to recycle than it would to create new ones. Um, I think and I believe plastics and newspapers uh, were in those categories. We've gotten categories. better on those issues um, than they were in the, fa in the past. I mean, so because the marketplace has come to bear on uh, recycling, you'll find that recycling has gotten more efficient over the last 15 years than it was previously. Uh, those Penn and Teller... Uh, episodes of BS were very prescient and timely, but they have become less timely and therefore their prescience has disappeared. Yeah, I still don't recycle. Hey, Pizza Guy, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Let's talk to Brett. He's in Baltimore. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Brett. Hello, Ian. How you doing? Hey, uh, I'm great. Go ahead with your thoughts, Brett. Um, I'm calling in. Have you guys heard or talked about Liberland at all? Yes. Uh, Mark, have, were you on the show for that, that night? Yeah, we, we did talk about it. it. Yeah, so can you it's inform our listeners as to what that is, please? 
All right, yeah, it's um, looking at the Wikipedia page right now. It's a self-proclaimed micronation situated in unclaimed territory on the western bank of uh, the Doom. I can't pronounce that. A river between Croatia and Serbia. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just reading their constitution a little bit, and it seems like they took the American constitution and took it to the next level. All right. So where yeah, as far as I understand, it's a quite a liberty-oriented uh, project um, from what uh, what I've been able to read on the Internet and, and that sort of thing. I, um, you know, I, at this point, <laughs> I want to know how many people have uh, picked up and moved, uh, and, you know, how many people are on this piece of land. I know very little about it. I'm not even sure the president of Liberland is living in Liberland. No, he doesn't. Right. Does anybody it's, live in Liberland? I don't—I'm not entirely sure, but I yeah. know it's about— it's very small. It's only about I've heard it's only about four point three like square miles. Yeah. But um they've had apparently they've had thousands of like uh citizenship requests. Yep. That's just what I've read online. That's but an asset. There's no doubt about it. See that but it it's only an asset there. if they can actually sort of get things going. They're um right. you know, many years away from sort of international recognition of their project and uh I you know, I, I find it interesting, but at this point I'm you know I'm, I'm not picking up and moving, are you? No, no, of course not. I was just thought it was an interesting idea to see that libertarian ideas have really taken so much root that micronations are being basically asserted that they exist. Thanks, Brett, for the call tonight. Back. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want to discuss toll-free, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, you've got Ian. And Mark. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. If you get online, then you need to protect your privacy. As uh, if you don't take steps to protect your privacy, then you really can't expect to have any. Your internet service provider certainly isn't interested in your privacy. They are likely logging all of the websites that you visit. The search terms you're entering, they're probably keeping those logs for several years in some cases. So you can stop that from happening. You can also protect yourself from packet sniffers and people that want to steal your credit card or bank account information. Uh, you can encrypt your data connection by using ProXPN. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and download their software. It's free for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, Whatever operating system you're using, they'll probably have it there over at proxpn.com slash FTL. Get the uh, the app from ProXPN, get it installed, and get it operating. It's very easy to do. Once you're connected with ProXPN, you are protected from the prying and the spying. You can use code FTL50, that's FTL like Free Talk Live, and 50 as in 50% off to save 50% on the annual account price over at proxpn.com slash FTL. When you get that premium account, You'll also get access to unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. You get it with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to your calls and thoughts coming up. The latest on Sheriff Joe Arpaio, the self-proclaimed toughest sheriff in America. Let's go first, though, to James in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Hey, James. Well, hello. Hey, you're on the uh, on the air. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, today I, I was uh, working on um, starting an agri- uh, how's it pronounced? agorist uh, business. Okay. Um, and uh, I wanted to be able to accept Bitcoin and realize I, as much as I hear about it, I knew very little about how it worked. So in the process of doing uh, some research, um, I came across uh, this story that was a little di- uh, disconcerting, mm-hmm. although uh, quite uh, predictable, I guess you could say. What, what, and what was um, that? Uh, in New York, um, there's this pencil pusher uh, uh, named Benjamin Olosky, um, I guess. Yep. He's uh, the super- superintendent of the New York Department of Financial Services is uh, working on um, essentially regulating um, uh, anybody, any online service that works with Bitcoin. And I guess the big issue was it was such, um, uh, from what I was reading on The Guardian, and um, I sent you guys the article. I was unable to post it onto Free Talk Live, so I I sent it via Facebook. Um, Yeah, I I was having technical problems today, so it... Um, but anyway, I, I sent it to you guys uh, on Facebook. Um, anyway, uh, according to the article by The Guardian, um, it would require digital currency companies to uh, obtain what they call um, a bit license. 
I beat them to it. Uh, okay. uh, I actually got the Bitcoin Not Bombs intergalactic Bitcoin waste license. So I don't really need a New York Bitcoin license because uh, I went to Bitcoin Not Bombs and got their intergalactic Bitcoin license. Yeah, I have one of those. It's pretty cool. But that's really more of a joke, Mark. The uh, the people in uh, New York aren't joking. They're willing oh, to true. put you in a prison cell. Bitcoin uh, Not Bombs won't come and do horrifying things right. to you if you, uh, if you don't get their license. Now, the good news is you don't live in New York, James. So uh, really, you probably right. don't really have anything to worry about here. But yeah, for those people who are in New York, uh, they should be very, very interested in what's happening with the regulatory system there as far as Bitcoin is concerned. Um, it's not really clear what's going to end up being the case when all of this is said and done. Are they just going to be regulating Bitcoin exchanges in New York? Or will any business that accepts Bitcoin fall under these regulations? I don't know. I, uh, I've heard all of those things are possible, and I don't think that the final regula uh, I don't at least I haven't heard that the final regulations have been put into effect or finalized in, it, in any way at this point. Yeah, and, and uh, essentially, he, uh, fr from what I was reading, he ended up having to rewrite it because the original uh, regulation was just uh, there were too many complaints from too many people that it was just such a you know, essentially left everything open to, to interpretation. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that, that somebody, you know, looked at that and it was at least able to twist the arms for, for the folks in, in New York um, and at least get him to rewrite. I mean, granted, unfortunately, it's, it's uh, I know that they're stealing more, uh, you know, money from people to do it because it's taking time. And I'm, I know he probably doesn't work for free. Um, yeah, I mean, anyway, I, I guess uh, you really don't really have anything to be concerned about, though. What is it that's concerning about that to you? The fact that somebody that, this, that well, somebody's going to come along and give a license because you knew that was happening, right? right? Is that it concerning that it's going to happen in Michigan next, or what? Oh no, I'm I, I'm not concerned about Michigan. I mean, I, I've got plans to go to New Hampshire. Okay. So I mean, um, that, that's the whole reason I, I'm starting this business is to is to fund my uh, my move. Oh great. Um, it's it's just uh, it's just more or less um, it's you know. It sets a precedent because you know if if New York does it, and you know when when New York does something, it's it's probably one of the most highly regulated states yep, you know true. in the country. Um, you know it's who knows who's going to to you know uh, follow suit. Yeah, there's so, a good chance that other um, states will look at New York and then they'll uh, they'll lift their regulations as boilerplate and add them to the regulatory structure in the the other states out there. I mean, there's no doubt. That's a realistic possibility. Um, you know, for me, I'm not really worried about it. I trust in the geeks. I trust in the the cryptography that is bit, that uh, backs Bitcoin. And I know that even though the government go goons may try to regulate the people who do business as far as exchanging Bitcoin are concerned, because governments don't like it when money transfers between people without getting a cut. Yeah. Um, that that won't really, in my opinion, it's not going to stop Bitcoin because Bitcoin is an international currency. And, uh, you know, the actions of one government or another are really a non, uh, non-issue as far as I'm concerned to whether yeah. or not Bitcoin will continue. Governments have all kinds of regulations on all kinds of things that uh, as far as like, say, cash, you can't. Governments have all kinds of reg regulations on using cash to buy marijuana. It mm -hmm. hasn't worked in decades and it won't begin to work anytime soon. They're just dumb regulations. Yeah, if I were a Bitcoin. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I, I was going to say I, I do ha have uh, a question though. Um, something, something, um, you know, to think about. Is it uh, just the uh, um, exchanges that work? Uh, you know, and it, this might be up for speculation. Do you think it's just going to be for the businesses um, that are located in New York that that um, that do business with with Bitcoin? So it, you know, let's say there's an exchange um, that. Because there, there's one of the Bitcoin exchanges right now that uh, in New York that applied for a banking license as well. Um, so is it just those located within the borders of New York? It's or for as many businesses as they can possibly get to, uh, to to take on the rules. As any business, as many gotcha. businesses as that that'll do it. That's what it's for. But generally, jurisdiction doesn't extend beyond the borders of the state. Thank you, James, for the call and good They'd luck. They'd love with it to be. That, I mean, they want to collect sales tax for, for their uh, people in New York that buy things from outside of the state. It's ridiculous. James, they good do. luck with your move and the business. Thanks for the call tonight. If you want to learn more about Bitcoin, then I would recommend you visit weusecoins.com. It's a great intro website. There's a quick video, maybe about two minutes long there on the front page. We got some good stuff at bitcoin.freetalklive.com, too. Good links. Um, 
there's a link to weusecoins.com there. Our, that's holes. our Bitcoin page where you can donate to Free Talk Live, though. There's really not much much else there. Maybe one to expresscoin.com, too. More coming up. Measles is activating on a mass scale now due to the vaccines and iron poisoning. All symptoms, disease, and deaths are due to measles and iron, not just rash and flu-like symptoms, as the officials claim. Measles requires a host with iron to replicate. Iron intake is at an unprecedented level. Deaths and hospitalizations are set to soar now in 2015. This is the extermination plan, people. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. Unveilingthem.com. Attention. Do you owe money to the IRS or have years of unfiled returns? Are you being audited or receiving threatening letters? If the answer is yes, you need help. The IRS can seize your property and assets, impose fines and penalties, garnish your wages, and even go after your bank account. Don't take on the IRS by yourself. Don't let the IRS destroy your life. Take action now. Call our team of experts for a free and confidential initial evaluation. We've helped thousands resolve their tax problems. Let us help you. 800-261-7073. 800-261-7073. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Yeah, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition continues. We've got plenty of time for you if you want to join us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on our site. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Mark, a moment ago you mentioned our Bitcoin page on the Free Talk Live site. It's it's not exactly a page designed for a newbie to Bitcoin. It is a page that is... It has links, though. 
It has a couple of links. But, you know, I would say WeUseCoins.com is the go-to site for newbies to Bitcoin. That site is designed for people who are brand new to the concept of Bitcoin, and it'll help you really understand the idea of a decentralized currency that is not issued by any bank or any government that allows you to send money to anyone in the world in basically an instant for next to zero. I mean, a very, 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 very small uh, fee is applied to the Bitcoin transactions. And so start there. But when you're ready to get some Bitcoin... When by very fall, small, you mean like pennies. You can send yeah, it that's for right. as low as pennies, yeah. Yeah, very small. So uh, when you're ready to actually get some Bitcoin, then I would recommend ExpressCoin.com, where you can get Bitcoin and some of their competitors like Litecoin and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And over at ExpressCoin, they are a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. Just start at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help. ExpressCoin.com. Plus, they've got a smartphone app, which you can get at ExpressCoin.com. Don't forget to use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all over at ExpressCoin.com. Again, that's coupon code FTL, ExpressCoin.com. And once you do get those Bitcoin and you want to donate some to Free Talk Live's tip jar, feel free to drop by bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Also, maybe you've got some of those altcoins like the Litecoin or Dogecoin or something like 20-something others are accepted on our Bitcoin page via the shapeshift.io link there, which allows you to actually donate to us in Doge or Litecoin or whatever you want, and Shapeshift will automatically turn that donation into Bitcoin for us. So we don't have to deal with accepting 25 different currencies shapeshift handles all that for us it's all very cool uh so again you want to grab some bitcoin for the first time or for the 20th time go to expresscoin.com they've got them there and they can supply you with however many bitcoin you want as i understand it so once again that's expresscoin.com our toll-free number tonight is 855 450 free uh we had a guy call in a moment ago about bitcoin regulations he was concerned about the situation that's apparently still developing over in New York State where there's some bureaucrat who wants to create some kind of a Bitcoin license. Now, what'll be nice is uh, the caller from Kalamazoo mentioned he was actually planning on moving to New Hampshire. I'm going to jump to the conclusion that that's for the Free State Project. Uh, we didn't specifically ask him his reasons for moving to New Hampshire, but there are previously he said so. Did he? Okay, I don't I don't recall that. But uh, anyway, the the Free State Project is the idea of moving liberty oriented people, people who understand what freedom means, that you know you should be free to live your life so long as you don't uh, you know aggress against somebody else, steal from them, or hurt them in some way. Uh, that those people, libertarians and voluntarists alike, will be moving to New Hampshire and already are. Mark, that's the reason why you and I are here. That's why we've been here since 2006. We're early movers for the Free State Project. Turns out a lot of Free State Project participants are Bitcoin fans and are active in the Bitcoin community. And so what we see happening here, and for instance, in Manchester, they have the, uh, the world's longest running Bitcoin meetup. They have a Bitcoin meetup every single week out there in Manchester. And I think it's awesome. I actually got to go and attend one of them last week for the first time. So that was cool. But I think what you're going to see happen is just because New York runs with this Bitcoin regulation idea, whatever it will end up being, doesn't necessarily mean that's going to translate to all 50 states. Now, it's certainly true that some states are going to look at that and they're going to say, oh, well, we want to do that here. And then they'll, they'll copy New York. I, I have no doubt about that. Sure. But what you might see happen, or at least what I, I hope you'll see happen, is that there are so many Bitcoin fans here in New Hampshire, so many Bitcoin activists, if you will, that I think there's a chance that New Hampshire could be the, uh, you know, the counter to New York, that they could have laws that are much more friendly to Bitcoin than New York does and almost create a, a Bitcoin haven Sort of a, a Bitcoin Silicon Valley, if you will, a place yeah. a place where Bitcoin is respected uh, by the people who call themselves the state, maybe even accepted by the people who call themselves the state. There was actually a bill put forward this year to, that would uh, essentially, I don't know if allow is the right word, maybe even force uh, state agencies to take Bitcoin. And there was some discussion amongst the libertarians as to whether or not, you know, the state should be forced to take Bitcoin, that, you know, maybe it should just be an option for them, that they should be perhaps authorized rather than forced. Uh, but nonetheless, the bill was put forward. And as I understand it, it has been put into a study committee or it may end up being put into a study committee, uh, which means that they want to learn more about Bitcoin. They want to 
the people that are in the the committee uh, of uh, bureaucrats or, or politicians who are looking at this issue. They didn't want to vote on it, that particular bill this year, but they may vote on it within the next year uh, if the study committee thing goes well. So who knows? I mean, maybe nothing will happen with that. I don't know. But the fact that it was even put forth in the first place by a Bitcoin-friendly legislator is a good sign. We actually have legislators elected here in New Hampshire who are active Bitcoiners, who are people who have Bitcoin, who understand what Bitcoin is and understand the benefits of of Bitcoin, and they're yeah. bringing that to the state. That may be true, but I have no desire to give Bitcoins to the state, right? Like, I just wouldn't do that. Well, me neither, but it's the idea, Mark, that uh, the pitch for this, I guess, because there's an argument against it, uh, but the pitch for it is essentially that, well, if the state officially begins accepting Bitcoins as payment for fines and things like that, or payment for taxes, then that could actually help legitimize Bitcoin in people's minds, because there's a certain segment of the population who they're very skeptical, and I think rightly so, of Bitcoin. It's this new technology. It's, you know, at least to somebody who's new to it, it seems unproven. It seems scary. It seems a little shifty, depending on the news stories that they've heard about it, because there's certainly uh, plenty of people in the mainstream media who are uh, bad-mouthing Bitcoin and, and talking down about it and predict, predicting its doom and you know saying that it's only good for illegal things, which is nonsense. There's major companies as large as Dell Computers and Overstock.com and Wikipedia who are all accepting Bitcoin. You can get huge discounts on Amazon, uh, you know, basically 20% off of the really great prices they have at Amazon and that you can reach through. Through Purse.io. Purse.io, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the more you learn about Bitcoin, the more legitimate I think it will seem. But there are, you know, the critics who, you know, they've got their reasons. Anyway, so the, the pitch would be that it would more legitimize Bitcoin and if the state were to be accepting it. And that that could do a good thing for the Bitcoin price and it could make Bitcoin more accepted by other businesses. That's the theory. Whether or not it'll pan out, we'll keep you informed here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I was actually doing some Bitcoin outreach today, Mark. I went really? to the college and was handing out some Bitcoin flyers that we made up here in Keene that are just kind of uh, brief introductory flyers. They're about a quarter page of paper, and uh, they're kind of nice, you know, printed on nice uh, cardstock and glossy, and it looks good. And it's just got some basic info that you can actually find over at WeUseCoins.com. We took some of the text from WeUseCoins and basically cut it down, cut it down, and made it as simple as possible, and then put it on these cards. I was at a college event and handing these things out. And actually, it seemed like more people knew about Bitcoin this year than last year, because I'd done similar things on the college campus last year. And I would say that about 10% of the people that I handed flyers to last year had heard about Bitcoin. I'd say maybe it was closer to 20% mm -hmm. uh, this time around. So I'm, yeah, I feel like there's been some progression in people's uh, at least whether or, not, whether or not they have an intimate understanding of Bitcoin, I don't know, but their awareness. At of least Bitcoin. they know what it is. Yeah, their awareness has uh, has progressed. So you can share your thoughts with us here tonight. It doesn't matter what it's about. We've talked about the existence of the state and recycling and uh, Bitcoin here. But coming up still, we've got Sheriff Joe. He's been in court, in, in uh, district court, actually federal district court, over the last week, apparently, maybe even longer than that. I didn't know about this until tonight when I started coming across the news articles about it. He is being uh, held, or not not quite yet, but may be held in contempt. Contempt of court by this supposed man of the law who is uh, allegedly so respectful of this system that he's a part of. Well, he's ignored a judge's order, apparently. And we'll tell you what that order was all about and what's going on in that case because it's not yet wrapped up. It may lead to criminal contempt charges. So it's a civil contempt case, which may ultimately result in Sheriff Joe going to his own prison facility as an inmate. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins. Stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. 
Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I've found something that works. Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. Doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar. If you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back, because this stuff works. Australian Dream is available at Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Walmart, Target, and other drug stores and supermarkets everywhere. So the news breaks, Hillary Clinton's running for president. My buddy Mark says to me, hey, didn't Hillary support the Brady Bill and the assault weapons ban? And I'm thinking, yeah, 1992 presidential campaign. Oh, my God, a gun grabber in the White House. So at Guns80.com, they've come up with the Hillary Clinton special. They just call it the Hillary. You even get two 30-round magazines for free, and it's only $474.95 for the whole kit. So get your AR-15 kit and tell Hillary, ha-ha. 8442-GUNS80. That's GUNS80.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com. Enhancing health and privacy. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live here on the Live Saturday Edition. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Will uh, the toughest sheriff, the so-called self-professed toughest sheriff in America, be so tough after he has his self uh, a showdown with a judge in a federal courtroom? Well, we can tell you more about what happened with Sheriff Joe Arpaio this week here in a little bit. Our toll-free number, if you want to join us on the radio waves to talk about anything that's on your mind, is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Also join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Let's go to Rachel, because you can bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. Rachel is calling from Reading, Connecticut. Hi, Rachel. Hi, how are you? Hey, good. Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, I So I live in Connecticut, and I work in New York City. Um, my boyfriend runs the business from home, so he uh, he runs the online business. He loves doing that. Um, I We have been talking about moving to New Hampshire because 
um, we want to be around some more like-minded folks. Um, and one of the things we heard about that we're excited about is going to Pork Fest. So I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit more about Pork Fest and what it's all about and how it got started. Sure. Por- the Porcupine Freedom Festival, um, not uh, not really having much to do with the flesh of pigs, although I'm sure there are people. There's a pig be- that people eat. At Pork Fest, yeah, right? yeah, there was a there was a roaster pig, yeah, uh, yeah no doubt about but that. But that's not its namesake. No, it's the porcupine. It's pork with a C. <laughs> yeah. um, it's been. I think this is the tw- this will be the twelfth annual coming up this summer, at the end of June. Oh, great. And it has been going on for some time. And what happens is is that about two thousand liberty minded folks, many of them would identify as libertarian. Some would probably identify as hard writers. Some people would identify as anarchists, voluntarists, a variety of names and all with different ideas, but uh, sort of centered around the idea of human liberty, that uh, people should be able to do what they want as long as they don't harm other folks. And they'll be showing up there for, you know, to hear speeches uh, there'll be, uh, of course, there'll be Agra Alley, which is this big vending area, lots of food in that vending area, but people selling other sort of knickknacks and things that they've made and uh, stuff they're excited about. Lots of those folks are selling things uh, or will accept Bitcoin or silver, for instance, alternative, alternative currencies. currencies like that. Yeah. And uh, there will be, uh, besides the speeches, there's going to be uh, family events. So the young, the kids have things to do together. And then there's these things that are sort of more self-organized, but teenage things. They they do humans versus zombies. I know that they run around and uh, play play that with each other. And um, you know, different different days, they have different setups and things they're going to do. There's Lots ad- of parties. Adult parties, no, no shortage of yeah. them. And uh, so adults, you know, partying responsibly. And <laughs> that's the event. There's some weird dome cool. tents, too, and I don't know what goes yeah. on in those. I've there heard. is supposed to be some kind of strange alternative sex dome thing yep. that goes on. I have Ooh. seen the dome. <laughs> I was in the dome when no one was really in the dome. Oh, I just, really? Like, I wanted to see what it was like in Did the dome. Did your wife know you were in but the dome? But it was two—I don't know. She might have been with me. But it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so I probably would have left people to their devices if uh, things had been going on. But I heard there was a bondage show or something like that in one of those, those domes. Yeah. So there's all kinds yeah. of strange things. and Right, uh, everything from like wholesome church groups to yeah. bondage shows. There will you know? be a Quaker meeting that cool. I'm setting up this year. Uh, you know, there's other Quakers coming, so we're going to have a Quaker meeting. Oh, cool. And so there's Great. everything, like just the whole gamut of sort of society boiled down into this Odd place for a uh, for a week. Yeah, in it's, New liber- it's libertarians hanging out in the woods for a week, and Great. it's a lot of fun. And if you've never been to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, you really ought to go. Whether you're in Connecticut, as you are, uh, Rachel, or elsewhere in the country, people it's, come from all over the world. It's for a lot of fun. I think that the so my boyfriend has um he has a pretty big YouTube channel um oh. and I don't I don't know if I want to pl- if I should plug it at all here. <laughs> it's a little silly. He runs a online reselling channel, um, basically talking about um, buying and selling things on Amazon and eBay, mm-hmm. and has about 21,000 subscribers at this point. Not bad. So we're thinking that this could be a cool event where we, you know, let all of our subscribers know that, you know, Andrew is going to be going to this event, um, and maybe a bunch of really cool uh, subscribers from the New England area could come. Yeah, that's totally something that you could do. Yeah. I mean, it's it's almost like for us, Mark. It's it's like a free talk live listener reunion. Kind yeah, of in thing a lot of ways as, as well. I mean, we, it's almost like a, a convention that we don't have to throw that we just show up to, and and fans of the show show up and they can sit there and watch us do our show. And you could also do the same thing where like, hey, meet uh, <laughs> was it Andrew? Meet Andrew on yeah. you know Thursday afternoon at two o'clock at this location. I mean, those are all things yeah. that you can easily put together. And usually the Porcupine Pine Freedom Festival organizers are are looking for people who want to, ha- you know, like host an event okay. or or perhaps, you know, it, it sounds like he's got expertise on how to sell things on eBay. So if you were to reach yeah, out to the, I, I can't promise anything, right? I'm not an organizer of the event, of but I know this has <laughs> happened in the past where they have said to people, hey, if you want to give a speech of some sort or mm-hmm. give a presentation that you can actually go to porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com, reach out to okay. the organizers through the website and say, hey, this is what we have this is the kind of presentation that uh, that we can put yeah. on and they might actually put you on the official schedule for something like that that would be pretty awesome yeah so, his channel is called uh picking profits and basically it is a really neat um he runs it for you know right out of our apartment and he started about three years ago 
and has just grown it. Um, and everything is free there. Um, and he ha- even has a weekly show every Tuesday night. And um, basically what happened was he started this when he used to play poker professionally, but then hmm. poker online poker got shut down. So he decided to just start doing this business um, from nothing and really has grown it and has so many awesome fans out there that really are just learning a lot. We need more people who are successful business people up here moving up as uh, as activists. And Rachel, I hope we helped you with your question tonight. Thank you for the call. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Feel free to come up, say hello, and you know cool. maybe we'll even have you guys on the air. And thank you for the call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There's so many things to do at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You can't do it all. Uh, there are multiple things happening simultaneously. And so many people, you can't meet them all. You said around 2,000. I, th- I think that's a little on the high side, but at least 1,500, if not 1,700 or so. So there's quite a few uh, liberty-minded folks that go to this event, and you should be there. In fact, it's the last week of June this year. I don't know if we mentioned that, but it's co- – it's, I said the end of June. Did you? Okay. It's We're two months away. I mean, this is eight weeks out. This is – it's going to come up fast. Yeah, it's always so, epic. I mean, people say it's a life-changing event. Yeah. Um, Start making your plans now if you're going to attend. And uh, there are all, also people who want to carpool up. So, you know, as you're as you're driving up here, you might actually be able to pick up some other people. Uh, if you go to the Porcupine, uh, porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com, they may link there somewhere on the site. I, I'm not intimately familiar with it, but somewhere to resources where you could actually, you know, have ride-sharing services and things like that. Let's go to Poltergeist calling from Massachusetts. You're on Free Talk Live, Poltergeist. Um, Mark, we've talked. Um, I'm the guy with the rocks, um, the historical rocks. You oh, over in like uh, Maryland or something? These uh, these these rocks with the sort of Indian hieroglyphs on them? Yes, sir. It's Massachusetts. Sorry about that. Okay. It's all right. Um, I just sent you a couple couple more pictures. Um, I do not know what to do with this, and it, it's over my head. It's over, you know, it's... um. What are we I talking about here? To... Do with what? Well, how do I explain this? Like, they, they are hieroglyphs, and they're, like, just right there, and it's a, it's a memorial. It's an ancient burial ground. It's Massasoit's burial ground. It's Have you gotten... On... Maybe maybe you should get a hold of local uh, colleges or something like. That. There's got to be history professors or something in the local area that would be, uh, you know, make, be excited about this and be able to do something with it. I um, you you would kind of think that, and I've talked, you know, I've, I've talked to a few people. You you would think that, mm-hmm. and I know what you're saying, and and um, it's just a historical fact that they've they've covered this place up and basically they don't want the story to be told because I'll say this, have you ever heard of the fact that there were black Native Americans, not just red skinned Native Americans? Do you mean uh, escapes uh, escape slaves that went to live among uh, Native Americans? No, 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 nothing like that. No, I don't. I haven't heard that. No. Okay. And that's, that's the thing. When you read the older history books, basically books written in like 1890 and before then they specifically talk about it massasoit himself and i'm just um his tribe and the federation they were multicultural and they had you know black natives living here i'd America, recommend that you put up a website Africa. Uh, maybe, you know, put the evidence online to try to persuade people about this, you know, these rocks that you consider to be very, very historically important. If you can't get anyone to listen to you locally, maybe you can get people to listen to you on the Internet. And uh, good luck, Poltergeist. 855-450 free. Of course, it probably will just look like another crazy website. 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com.
New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you want to move to the free state, and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keen in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $230. Antiwar.com reports deployed last week to the Yemeni coast on the pretext of the proximity of the convoy of Iranian cargo ships whose destination was never known. The USS Theodore Roosevelt and a series of other U.S. warships have begun to leave Yemeni waters, returning to their long-standing position parked off the Iranian coast. The Pentagon insisted that during the deployment there was no communication with the Iranian cargo ships and bragged that the Iranian convoy turned away from Yemen before the U.S. warships did. The the move away suggests U.S. ships won't be engaging any further in the naval blockade of Yemen, though so far they were only confirmed to have carried out a single boarding of a Panamanian cargo ship they falsely accused of having Iranian weapons on board. The Iranian cargo convoy remains shrouded in mystery, however, as it never went to Yemen and no one has ever publicly said where it actually was going. Though the U.S. is trying to present the ships not going to Yemen as some sort of military achievement, it was never more than U.S. conjecture that the ships were heading there anyhow. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports an Atlanta teen who burned over 70% of his body after two friends threw a pot of boiling rice on him while he was asleep is in a medically induced coma. Damon Clay, age 17, was hospitalized after two people who claimed he had stolen a video game console attacked him earlier this week while he was sleeping on a couch. Quintavious Barber, 19, and Malik Morton, 18, were arrested for aggravated assault and child cruelty. Family members said Clay was recently released from jail after a burglary conviction and turned over to a supervising nonprofit organization, but a minister who told a judge he would shelter Clay provided no guidance. They added that instead of a promised group home, Clay lived with an assortment of friends and relatives. Clay's aunt said he didn't have any supervision. None. Doctors at Grady Memorial Hospital said more surgery is to be expected after Clay is removed from a ventilator on Sunday. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. 
The Guardian reports Switzerland is the happiest nation on earth, but Nordic nations still take up half of the top 10 places on an exhaustive and increasingly influential index of global well-being. In the third world happiness report, now encompassing 158 nations, Denmark slipped to third behind both Switzerland and Iceland, with Norway, Finland, and Sweden also near the top. The United Kingdom is 21st, one place higher than in the second edition in 2013. The study ranks countries by a series of factors, some nationally determined, for example, per capita GDP and healthy life expectancy. Others are worked out through information gathered via Gallup World Poll, a vast system of surveys that began in 2005 and now covers more than 160 countries. The idea of assessing population by contentment rather than just wealth has proved influential and is promoted by both the United Nations, whose Sustainable Development Solutions Network publishes the index, and the Organization for Economic Economic cooperation and development. While the Himalayan Kingdom of Bhutan remains best known for its gross national happiness credo, David Cameron was another pioneer in 2010 instructing the Office for National Statistics to collate data on contentment. The latest index offers few surprises with the top nations. The first five are Switzerland, Iceland, Denmark, Norway, and Canada. The United States ranked 15th with New Zealand 9th and Australia 10th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It was a big night for music's hottest acts, especially for Lord Chillingsworth. In a shocking upset, the young artist took home the spookiest Halloween sound effect album Grammy for Creepy Night in Halloween Manor. Music blogger Ty Vaughn is here. Ty, what a shocker. Lord Chillingsworth's track, Man Being Boiled Alive While Chains Rattle in a Dungeon, was crazy spooky. It was everywhere this year. Haunted houses, Halloween stores, nighttime hayrides. Anywhere you look, people were getting the willies from this album. But a lot of people thought Grammy darling Dr. Dr. Spookenstein was a shoe-in to win for his album, Laboratory of Madness. And that was a great album. Critics praised Spookenstein's stripped-down approach, rattling real bones together and dripping real blood onto a screaming lady. The class act Spookenstein offered a gracious congratulations to Chillingsworth, saying, I'm a fan of every bloody who was nominated, especially Chillingsworth. I have a skeleton ton of respect for him as an artist. I just saw him on the dead carpet and congratulated him. This is the Onion News Network. back with more Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of this live Saturday edition of the program. Joining you tonight, it's Ian and Mark. Join us online at freetalklive.com and please do enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Uh, we've been actually kind of all over the map. I brought in a story tonight about Joe Arpaio who is the self-proclaimed toughest sheriff in America. Well, he didn't, apparently didn't look so tough sitting in front of a judge this week in an Arizona district courthouse, a federal district courthouse, where he is looking at contempt of court. Now, it's civil contempt at this point, but may Civil up- contempt have, uh, what, civil b- bars on the jail cell? Civil contempt you will probably not go to jail for, okay. as I understand it. I'm not an expert, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, and I've never been charged with civil contempt, so I can't speak from personal experience. Having been charged with contempt, you've never been charged with civil Correct. contempt. Correct. I have been charged with what's called direct criminal contempt, where uh, in criminal contempt, you, it's in a criminal case, and uh, direct means that you did something within the court's purview, within the courtroom itself, mm-hmm. typically, where the judge observed it happen. Uh, indirect would be where a a police officer would come to a judge and say to the say to the judge, "I have witnessed Mark Edge uh, con- commit contempt against this court," and then there would be a trial on that uh, direct contempt. There doesn't need to be a trial. There's just a right of allocution where the accused gets a chance to sort of defend themselves briefly before they are ultimately sentenced to what arbitrary uh, time frame the judge decides they should sit in jail. But with criminal, or excuse me, with civil contempt, as I understand it, and I don't know if direct versus indirect is even something that exists in civil contempt. I suspect it doesn't, but again, not an expert on uh, on this. But my understanding of civil contempt is that there are remedies for civil contempt, but they don't tend to involve jail. It's usually like a fine or some sort of a further injunction, perhaps. Uh, But if you know more about that, feel free to call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. I want to talk about what's going on with Joe Arpaio. He is uh, in court this week for basically ignoring a judge's order. 
And, you know, usually if you ignore a judge's order, that can bring some pretty serious consequences. Here it says um, under lit litigationfindlaw.com, it says that like charged uh, those charged with criminal contempt, the court may order incarceration On civil. of people held in civil contempt. Okay. Generally, the sanctions typically end when the party in contempt complies with the court's order. So. Mm -hmm. Joe Arpaio could just take this to the wire and then begin to comply or whatever, claim to comply or whatever. Well, he's been in violation for a while. We can talk about that here in a moment, what's going on uh, out in Maricopa County. But you can also bring up whatever's on your mind. Let's go to Alana, listening in Georgia in the Atlanta area via TuneIn. Hello, Alana. Hi there, guys. Hey. It's good to talk to you again. Welcome. Um, I, just wanted to, oh, I just wanted to bring up the subject of a... Two hour interview with Diane Sawyer last night with Bruce Jenner. And yeah. it's, you know, you guys are, you know, a week in, in front of that. So I know you discussed this last last week a little bit. So, and I was able to call and get in. And I just wanted to say to, to that what I really pretty much respected most that I do not see a lot of. In the gay community, and not or, or the LGBT, whatever you, I mean, whatever community you want to call that, because that's what they call it. But he, um, it seems to me that he is really sincere in, in what he's trying to to put out there. But more than that, he was honest. With Let's talk briefly his, about who this guy is, uh, Bruce Jenner. I, I mean, I one probably, of the greatest athletes, living athletes today. Is he an oh athlete? God, I didn't yeah. even know that. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, yes. tri he was uh, Olympic decathlon. gold medalist. Wow. And he was the first Wheaties. He was the first athlete huh. on a uh, athlete on a Wheaties box. Wow, that's incredible. Now, isn't he in his seventies uh, or late sixties or something like that? He's early sixties. Gotta 60s. be in his late sixties. Okay. I thought he was in his early sixties. I'd like to point out I had a pair of Bruce Jenner shoes wow. uh, in the uh, 70s when I was a little. He's 65, uh, according to All Wiki. Right. So he's mid 60s. Yeah, according to Google. Uh, so the big deal about Bruce Jenner, I hadn't really known who he was up until like the last year or so. And he's gained a lot of popularity in recent days or in recent years because apparently he's married to or was married to the mother of what now? Chris Kardashian. Yeah, so he's the father of Kim Kardashian. No, no, no. He, is the he is the stepfather of Kim Kardashian. Stepfather. Uh, with Chris, he has two children. He has six children total. And, uh, I think I heard like 10 grandchildren. And that it might. And another point I wanted to bring up was now I wonder within the hip hop and the rap business, and I don't know if you guys heard about this, but um, Kanye West did a whole entire. Like he rewrote the by the Genesis. I'm wondering now. Kanye West Kanye rewrote be, Genesis in the Bible. Is that what you're saying? Yes, to where he is God. I mean, they, he literally almost believes this, and, he, and this goes on and on. All you right, that sounds really interesting. But uh, let's go back. It's got to be a separate uh, topic. <laughs> yeah, let's go back uh, real quick to Bruce Jenner. So the the thing that's in the news here, in case people haven't heard, is Bruce Jenner has come out as a woman. Uh, he is saying that he's beginning the transition because process uh, from, I guess she, uh, is beginning the transition process from going from a man to a male to a female that uh, that he sa or she says that she's always been this way, that, you know, from a young child or very young age, uh, she remembers feeling like uh, as a woman trapped in a man's body. I haven't seen... Trapped in a very athletic well, man's body. I haven't seen well, I'd the like to, I'd interview, like to but... I would just like to say that I always enjoyed women's clothes, but uh, I don't know that I could do all that. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, and then just the kind of thing has a coming about, even bringing this, broaching this subject, it, it just blows my mind. I mean, this really, I think, will be a tremendous help for the transgender community. So I yeah, I don't see it as a bad thing. I think that it's, you know, it's a, it's a br it's a brave move, although I'm, I'm sure some of the skeptics are saying he's only doing this for attention and for television's sake. Lots uh, of people, you know what? If I may just say that's that's my whole point because I know they are saying that had he not shared. I have so many friends that I know. I cannot tell you how many married men that I know. Maybe they don't dress up and maybe they don't do that. But do you talk about the down low and, and, and in Georgia where, you know, where the diseases are now, you know, HIV is, is, is so prominent. Again, probably another su subject, but I, yeah. I, I mean, 
he, he's telling the truth, and and that's just something you know that I. That's I not something that I think people wrong. really joke about. I mean, the, the people tell jokes about that, but I don't think individuals would joke about uh, transitioning to you know the opposite sex. That's well, a pretty serious decision to make, and it will make you the butt of a lot of jokes. And thank you, Alana, for the call tonight. It will make you the target of a lot of derision. So I don't think most people would want to voluntarily uh, put themselves in that position unless they actually really did you know believe that. I'd agree with you that most people don't. I do think that there are people who are unstable who um, you know may choose to go through the the surgery for whatever reason, thinking it's going to make them whole and complete, mm. and then it doesn't do that. Then they're just crazy and they've chopped their parts up. Um, so. Yeah, you know, it's there's crazy people and there's nothing you can do about it. In my opinion, as long as they're not making me pay for it, as long as the government doesn't say, you know what we need? We need a government funded transgendered program thing out there. Fine. That's fine. You should be able to do what you want. They're your parts. Chop them up as you wish. John's in Virginia listening to WNIS. Hello, John. Hey, good evening. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, I was calling, uh, the guy called about the hieroglyphs, uh, about ten minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, it, it, well, I'm sorry. Um, here at the uh, Great Dismal Swamp, which was surveyed by George Washington, but uh, about ten or fifteen years ago, they found a Chinese junk in which is a old boat. Yeah. If you don't know, what is um, what what swamp is it? it? The Great Dismal Swamp. Okay. And it was, and they found a Chinese junk in the bottom. Of uh, it's uh, Lake Drummond, and they estimated the uh, the the boat to be about three thousand years old. So, wh- what I'm getting at is this guy said he doesn't know what to do with this information. Well, we're not being told the true history. Uh, we got a O'Brien that lived with the Indians, ancient Indians out in Texas. We have Vikings. We have hieroglyphs in the. Uh, walls and caves of the Grand Canyon. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, it's I, you know I've looked a lot of this alternative history stuff out there, and I would say that many people who sort of write the history they get very attached to what they've written and they don't want to see anything new. And so, yeah, absolutely, I agree with you, John. Thanks for sharing tonight. I appreciate it. Toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty free. It's Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey... You're welcome. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, Did you get my email? Email 101. If it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, 
did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. It's weusecoins.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition continuing here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there all free don't forget you can also get on the line with us here via skype at skype username lrn.fm mark free shipping on wine still a deal yeah it, it is still a deal uh, you know nothing makes a great meal um, into a superb meal like a, a great bottle of wine but great bottles of wine can be you know kind of costly between 70 mm. to 100 dollars to get uh, wines that tend to be you know 90 points and above these are the best wines um but our friend cameron hughes over at chwine.com what he does is he goes to these great wineries mostly around napa valley but around the world too and he buys their overstock now this stuff's just as good as the stuff they're putting in bottles it's just that when you manufacture things you're never going to hit exactly the amount that you need and you certainly don't want to be short so you're usually going to be over and he takes their overages, he bottles them up in bottles where you can't tell exactly where they came from. They'll say like lot 569 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then he sells them. That way you know that you like bottle 569 and you can get more of it until it's gone. But, um, you know, other than that, you really don't know where it came from. You just know that it's a high-end wine, 90 points and above. And he sells these things at a 70% discount and more. You can get wines from between fifteen and thirty dollars that would normally be seventy and a hundred dollars, and that's a big deal. Those are great wines, by the way. We've done some wine tastings here with Cameron Hughes' product, and it's excellent. Yes, and we've yep, we had uh, a few different wine tastings, and they've always been great. Uh, just go to chwine.com. There's a microphone in the upper left-hand corner. Click on that and enter our uh, coupon code FTL. With that coupon code, you get twenty percent off of select wines and free okay. shipping. It's awesome. a really great deal. I'd look for those wines that are 20% off because they, you know, these wines are excellent. You can't go wrong with any of the, and the inventory. Pricing matters. And when you're talking about free shipping, you have to get three bottles to get free shipping, but mm -hmm. that's because of the way the boxes are shaped. And you don't want to not get three bottles anyway. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, actually, they have uh, six bottle deals too. So go on over there, chwine.com. Click on the microphone in the upper left and use coupon code FTL. All the reviews from our listeners have been super positive so far. Yeah, lots of our listeners. We've had we've been very successful. CHWine.com loves us because we have lots of people who like to drink wine on our show. Yep, so CHWine.com, code FTL. That's correct. To get the discount and the free shipping. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Lori Roberts over at AZCentral.com is reporting from the courthouse where the toughest sheriff in America 
Sheriff Joe Arpaio is on trial. It seemed fitting, writes Lori Roberts, somehow that Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio's unmasking this week came on the anniversary of Senate Bill 1070, on the day that marks largely a largely irrelevant law that was mostly struck down as unconstitutional. Arpaio took his own giant step toward irrelevance on Thursday. America's scariest sheriff admitted that he'd hired an investigator to investigate the Department of Justice, which at the <laughs> time was investigating Arpaio and his top deputies He'll for, show him. for abuse of power. He admitted that his attorney hired an investigator to investigate the wife of the very same federal judge who nailed the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office for engaging in widespread racial profiling of Latino drivers. That judge is the same judge who is now considering whether to refer Arpaio to prosecutors for criminal contempt charges. Hmm. Generally speaking... This is quite a little sordid mess here. Yeah, so, I mean, essentially what happened was Arpaio was ordered to stop racial profiling against people. He was uh, illegally detaining people who were Hispanic-looking on, you know, ostensible immigration charges, even though he would never charge them with anything. He would just detain them and, and harass them. Uh, but we can talk more about that here in a moment. Generally speaking, writes Roberts, it is not nice to try to intimidate the federal authorities, but then again, intimidation has been the name of Arpaio's sleazy game for years. That's the It's the name of uh, the Fed's game, too. Absolutely. I, I think it's kind of silly that the Feds don't, well, we don't like it when people intimidate us. Well, the federal court system is as corrupt as any state court system. Just ask Dan Saban, who ran against Arpaio in 2004 and found himself the subject of a rape investigation. Arpaio opened a criminal investigation and a 30-year-old allegation that Saban, at the time 17, had raped his adoptive mother. Saban claimed that he was the victim. Regardless, the statute of limitations had run out, but not the statute of intimidation. Saban lost the election, he sued for defamation and lost, but it cost the taxpayers well over $800,000 to defend Arpaio in that matter. Just ask former Maricopa County school uh, superintendent. Sandra. This is this is another thing about uh, these these uh, public bureaucrats. Um, many times they're getting protection that they don't have to pay for. That's right. When you deal with the court system, you have to kick out tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars that I don't know about you, I don't have um, in order to defend yourself. This is the reason that we have so many settlements. This is the reason we have so many plea bargains is because the court system isn't designed for justice. It's designed to sort of find the middle. And what the middle is between you go to prison for two years or you get off scot-free is like a year or six months or whatever it is. Right. And that isn't necessarily justice, especially if you didn't do anything. So this system is broken, civil and criminal, top to bottom. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I'm certainly no fan of the federal court system. It's just fun to watch the government goons fight amongst themselves. I don't I don't mind watching that. It's entertaining. And if they're fighting with each other, then that's time they can't spend screwing the rest of us over. So, I'll give you that. So I'm OK with that. So just ask former Maricopa County School Superintendent Sandra Downing, whose home was invaded in 2006 by the sheriff's own SWAT team in search of evidence that she'd been stealing, basically from homeless children. She was later convicted of a misdemeanor for giving her daughter a summer job. That one cost taxpayers $250,000. The best they could do is uh, nepotism. Okay. And they raided this woman's home over this. Just ask Phoenix New Times, it's a in, more of an independent paper out there, founders Michael Lacey and Jim Larkin arrested in 2007 in the dead of night after writing a piece that was critical of Arpaio's sidekick, then Maricopa County attorney Andrew Thomas. That case cost taxpayers $3.75 million. Hmm. Just ask former Maricopa County supervisors. By the way, the uh, Phoenix New Times deserves a lot of credit. They've been doing a lot of reporting about Joe Arpaio and his criminal gang there for years. It seems like there's a lot of dirt to dig. Um, oh, yeah. But also the other side of it is, is when you're king of the hill, um, there's going to be a lot of people who are trying to knock you down. And that's what a lot of people are going to claim about Arpaio. Yeah, but if you're a good guy who's actually you know, not screwing people over left and right, it's less likely that people are going to be going after you all over the place, right? Like. You know, Joe Arpaio 
he's a target because he's a bad man, right? He claims he's the toughest sheriff in America. He violates his, you know, the the government's rules all the time, and just he doesn't give a flip about your constitutional rights. He'll violate them. Without a thought, a second well, thought. Uh, yeah, I think that for me, what uh, Sheriff Joe does is he rides this wave of uh, emotionalism that surrounds crime. Many people, um, and I've been in prison, uh, many people believe that somehow you can take bad people and stick them in a bad place and yeah. treat them badly day after day, surrounded by other bad people and, uh, you know, just bad, bad, bad. All, pile all the bad you can possibly pile on them, uh, and then when you release them, suddenly they're going to act good. Yeah, and they believe I think that's that. a broken system. Well, we can talk more about it here in a moment. But those people believe that because they've never been given any evidence to the contrary, nor would they be willing to really look at any evidence to the contrary. Oftentimes. Uh, we'll talk more about old Sheriff Joe. You can share your thoughts here at 855 453 if the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Free Talk Live. The Supreme Court has ruled over and over again that government has no obligation to provide any services, even services as re remedial as protection. They don't have any obligation to provide those services. So therefore, if there is no obligation on their part to provide any services, why should there be an obligation on our part to pay them? Well, there isn't. It's only an obligation of they, you know implement this thing and then you're afraid because they have guns people are scared but it's never going to end until we get in over that fear absolutely i mean we're essentially being terrorized by a group of gangsters calling themselves the u.s federal government the only difference between the federal government and a you know a thug on the street is the size of the gang it's time people start treating the irs like the thugs they are Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com.
While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Talk Live. Join us here toll free. 855 450 free is the number. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. We are talking about Joe Arpaio, this so called America's toughest sheriff, as he likes to call himself. He's in court facing contempt for ignoring the orders of a federal judge. And apparently, he didn't look like such a tough guy when he was taking the stand and being questioned by the judge himself about whether or not the uh, the man Arpaio was ordering an investigation, a private investigator, to investigate the judge's wife. Uh, so <laughs> things are getting pretty personal here Indeed. in this situation. It sounds like some gangsters fighting a doubt, doesn't it? Yeah, and I'm fine with that. I, it doesn't bother me when the government goons fight amongst themselves, and I'm particularly amused to see Joe Arpaio uh, stuck in a, a witness chair and possibly facing time and maybe even in his own prison Although if it's federal, they might put him in some sort of federal facility. Of course, they'll probably end up giving him a little verbal uh, warning and you know a smack on the hand. Only if he agrees to comply with the court order, which he yeah. at this up to this point has not complied with. Right. Now, uh, before I get back into the story here, Mark, you were uh, talking about this tough on crime aspect that so many people in America really fall for, the idea that punishing a criminal by putting them amongst other criminals in a very uncomfortable, you know, awful place is somehow going to reform them and make them possible to release back into society. You, having personal experience, having spent several years in prison in the state of Florida, you can speak from personal experience, but a lot of the people who who believe that, who believe that this tough-on-crime punishment mentality works, they don't know really anything about it. They just know what they hear from people like Joe Arpaio, and people like him, all they do is talk about how tough they are on crime and, you know, show off the the auspices of being tough on crime. You know, we've got a bear cat. We've got the maximum security prison. We've got this, you know, X, XYZ system that's going to crush these criminals and crush the crime right out of them. But the reality is it doesn't work that way. No, I would say that it's uh, you know that that it's uh, of mitigable value, um, really, when you look at uh, those sorts of things. Um, there's really you look say at Canada, the incarceration there not nearly as draconian. Uh, remember, they got rid of things that they called cable TV in prisons in Florida while mm-hmm. I was in there. It wasn't cable TV; it was TV that was closed circuit right. that was run on a cable. It's not like everybody had HBO and was sitting around <laughs> eating popcorn. Um, you know, I mean, that's this. It's all these. They're constantly looking for the next thing that they can take away from somebody who's been in there for you know years and years. They've got eighty five percent in many states, um, including the federal government, and. 85%. 85% means that's how long you're going to do as far as your sentence goes. Gotcha. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of claims that people go, you know, do a few years and they get right back out and do the same thing over and over again. And, um, you know, there's certainly a recidivism rate. But when I was in prison, they spent no time, zero time trying to sort of teach people something else. Now, in my case, I guess they can claim to have rehabilitated me because— I had something to have been habilitated from in the first place. I came from an upper middle class family. I happened to be in a, you know, in my opinion, the, hanging out with the wrong people, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, I'm certainly not trying to absolve myself of any guilt, but that was kind of the situation. Whereas a lot of these people, they've grown up in situations where they don't have the tools to sort of work inside the system and, and make a better life for themselves. Just being an a-hole to them isn't a really successful system. Mm. There's got to be something better. They say that you can, you know, <laughs> better schools make it for made it make for a uh, you know fewer people going to prison. But the government runs the schools too. It's a failure from start to finish. Yeah, and then you got people like Joe Arpaio who like to tout the numbers, right? They like to talk about the numbers of people that they've arrested. The numbers of people that they've convicted, the numbers of people that they've sent to a prison cell. 
And then people, after of course, they hear— the United States has the largest prison population yeah. on the planet by several times. How's that working out? And it doesn't—you know, <laughs> the, the crime rate isn't any better as a result. Right. Dro- well, I mean, the crime rate has dropped over the course of decades. There's no doubt about that. But it's dropped worldwide. Yeah, and, and every person that Joe Arpaio puts in the prison system is just another person that is an excuse for the government to expand its size. He's not necessarily even putting dangerous criminals in there. I'm, I'm sure some people are dangerous, but a lot of them are drug dealers and drug users and people who, you know, prostitutes, uh, people who haven't actually hurt anyone. They're voluntarily doing business with other consenting adults, but yet Joe Arpaio counts them too. I mean, they're big numbers of the numbers that he's counting and and advertising and you know prompting or putting putting himself out there as the toughest sheriff in America it's all about the numbers to him it's not well, about I don't blame helping him people. for that particularly that's a so sort of a societal problem that we have start to finish that's, well, right people people love that stuff which is why he keeps getting reelected over and over again well people want to feel safe and what they want from their sheriff is a person who wants to put people in jail the sheriff is the traditional guardian of the jail they they're the traditional holder of the jail keys Mm -hmm. and that's what the expectation is is from a sheriff is is they want a person who wants to put people in jail i can understand that the problem is the quantity of laws i think you know if you're going to have laws enforced by a state you probably should have fewer of them and enforce them more rigorously Mm -hmm. than having a, a whole bunch of them that people just get away with for instance i'd like to point out that uh you know, a lot of these people that are for this tough on crime thing would also be for a nation of laws as a terminology that, that many times get used. But when I was in Florida and uh, when I was in prison in Florida, Jeb Bush's daughter got caught with uh, oh, some, the crackhead. some crack. Yeah, now, I more than once. I wouldn't call her a crackhead, but, you know, she got caught. She was smoking crack at rehab. Uh, well, how, you know, how much crack that's do you a have no, to smoke? No, no, no. What? How, how much crack do you have to smoke, and how often to become a crackhead, Mark? I'm, I'm not one to go ahead and just call somebody a crackhead. But when she you're certainly smuggling had problems. crack into the rehab facility in your sock, uh, I and you know, get, and, and then leaving group therapy so you can go get high on crack, I'd say that's evidence you might be a crackhead. If you're only putting it in your sock, you're a piker. Um, so, you know, the, anyway, the these people that, uh, you know, the, Jeb Bush said, hey, leave my family alone in this time of uh, crisis. Well, that's fine. I think his family should have been left alone in that time of crisis. But I'd like to point out how many... Oh, thousands, tens of thousands of families yeah. in Florida were not left alone by Jeb Bush's regime, the executive department of which he was in charge you first, when it Jeb. came to crack. Yeah. Like, he had no intention of leaving other people's right. kids alone about crack. And that's what the problem is. This isn't a nation of laws. This is a nation of l- rulers. You get what you put out there, Jeb. Well, so, I'm not. Look, you're, you've got this thing about Jeb or uh, Sheriff Arpaio. I don't have a problem with this. I have a problem with Joe Beercan listening to this right now and saying that this is good. We need to be tough on crime. Well, look, Joe, your politicians do whatever the hell they want in the face of the law because your laws are worthless. You advocate for these politicians to put these laws in place, and then they don't follow them. You haven't created a law, a, a world of equality. You've created a law of class warfare, and you are on the losing end, Joe Beercan. Let's talk to Bob, listening to WIBC-FM in Indianapolis. Hey, Bob. Yeah, hi. Thanks for having me on. Welcome. I, uh, just catching your program, and uh, and I, all I've seen about Joe Opio on, on on television in, is that he is very concerned about our border being wide open, and about our uh, current administration not really doing much to curb that problem. And I really feel like the guy is a true patriot in the fact that he is trying to do his best to keep us safe. Safe and, from what? Uh, from what? From from having an open border and having how's that put you in danger? Oh my God, are you kidding me? No, no, I'm not. Really? No, no. The you people know, that come here want to make a better life for themselves. How does that put you in danger? Okay, you you, you think ISIS is Al Qaeda and oh God. Uh, <laughs> ISIS isn't sneaking across else. the border? Jose is, and he wants to mow your lawn. How do you know? How do you know that? Well, How okay. You know look, that? if ISIS wants to sneak across the border, that's have a problem. Been, have you ever been? Have you ever been down to the border? Have you of ever course, I have. Really, you're asking somebody in America if they've ever been to the Southwest? Yes. 
All right, stand by, Bob. I'll bring you back. You can tell me about how scared I sh I'm supposed to be here of uh, all these scary people coming across the border and why I need Joe Arpaio to keep me safe. Stand by. I want to bring you back. 855 450 free. More with Bob, hopefully, or your calls about whatever you want. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only $99, and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month, and this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five. $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Live Saturday edition. Toll free numbers 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. To help support Free Talk Live, you can help get us on satellite over Africa. 
not just Free Talk Live, but dozens of liberty-oriented shows on the Liberty Radio Network over at LRN.fm. The way you can help us with that and get perks, you know, there's the uh, the perks with these Indiegogo fundraisers. You go to africa.lrn.fm. You can contribute there. Any amount that you feel is appropriate. And everything you contribute, I appreciate it. Uh, so once again, go to africa.lrn.fm. We've got just under a month remaining in this fundraiser, about three weeks left. So if you can help out, I sure do appreciate it. We're, I think, over 10% of the way to the goal. Not, I don't think, unless we get a huge blast of publicity or something like that in the last three weeks or all of a sudden it goes viral, I don't expect we're going to uh, to make it. But that doesn't mean that this can't still happen. There are possibilities to get, negotiate uh, different rates with the satellite provider. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it all pans out. And I appreciate everybody to, uh, to go to africa.lrn.fm. Let's go back to Bob. He's in Carmel, Indiana, listening to WIBC out of Indianapolis. Bob, you had said that we should be afraid, be very afraid of uh, evil terrorists who are going to come across the border if it weren't for people like Joe Arpaio. Uh, Tell me a little bit more about that. Why should I be so afraid? Well, I don't remember saying that we should be afraid. but I'm paraphrasing uh, what you said. Yeah, no, uh, I did not say that. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe in the rule of law? Well, I just explained um, on the the air, I don't know if you heard me, why the rule of law is a fallacy. And it's because people, like for instance, I used the example of uh, Jeb Bush and his daughter getting caught for smoking crack and uh, him asking the press to leave his family alone in this time of crisis. While he was the chief executive of the state of Florida over an organization, the state of Florida, which was processing tens of thousands of people children for, you know, possession of crack um, through its prison system, which I think to be, you know, pretty much what the rule of law is. The rule of law is for peasants like you and I. Okay. Well, I'm just, I don't know how you went with Jeb Bush and uh, and the border. I think the rule of law is enforced by people who do not have to follow it, Bob. Okay. All right. Well, so do you believe? So evidently, you don't believe there's a legal way to come into our country. Oh, there are legal that, ways to come into the country. It's just very difficult, and many people would find it easier to swim the Rio Grande than to climb the mountain of paperwork that one has to do, and to spend tens of thousands of dollars in order to live a free life. And who can blame them for that? Well, I, you know, I, I can blame you for the fact that I feel like you're spewing a bunch of crap and you're endangering our country. I'm stealing? By, spewing. By, spewing. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I believe you're spewing a bunch of uh, crap. I want free people to be able to cross clue. the borders of you, free you countries actually, freely. You are a danger to our country, sir. I, I'm a, and, I'm and, treasonous. And you scare me. You scare me more. Than you know who scares me? The politicians the scare me. Nobody from Mexico who wants to come here and make a better life for themselves scares me. It's the politicians that want those laws that scare me. Yeah, what makes you think the okay, politicians well, uh, are going to help you help keep you safe, Bob, from these uh, invading hordes? You know what I hear happening is criminals coming over here, driving illegally, killing people on the road. And then they don't deport them. They just drive them back across the border, and then they repeat. They, they repeatedly break our laws. The well, and, hold on. I'd like to address put that. Us in danger and put us in danger, and it happens over and over and over again. Sure, it does. And, and it happens from American and, and citizens that's too. The the so Amer- the American conservative say, magazine. Hey. Right, uh, the American conservative magazine did a study, looked at. Hispanics, because they can't figure out who's legal and who's illegal, right? So they looked at Hispanics as far as the criminal system goes. That's why we have a legal system. That's why we have a legal system. Why, that doesn't here. address the issue. They looked at Hispanics versus whites versus blacks and found that Hispanics tend to commit crimes at about the same rate as whites do. So your claim that illegals are coming over here committing a disproportionate amount of crimes has no factual basis. You may have heard stories, and I'm sure there's some horrifying stories about what people who are in the country illegally have done, because there are horrifying stories about people who are in the country legally and what they've done. You know what's scary to me, uh, Bob, is the idea of creating a police state to try to keep people out, right? Because if you want to keep people out of the United States, you're going to have to have a pretty tough police force with a border fence and, you know, roving bands of... Yeah, uh, what's men- wrong with that? Yeah, what, what's what wrong with wrong? a wall that separates people? What's, it's not yeah, like in exactly, 1989, but, but, Reagan said, tear this wall down. You know, sir, I, I just, I, I, can't talk, I can't talk to a fool any further. All right, well, then goodbye. Just, you, you, Thanks for the call. 
I, I don't understand why conservatives ex exalt a man like Reagan who said tear down this wall that was keeping people who would not legally be able to cross a border on the other side and then – when it comes to a fence, they want to spend a whole bunch of government money to build a fence or a wall between us and Mexico. Well, you're presuming he was a conservative, but, uh, you know, maybe he was. There's a good chance of that. I, I am presuming say. it, but it, I, I, I can tell you I hear that from a lot of conservatives. Share your thoughts with us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. I used to be one of these sort of limit the, uh, limit the folks that can come here, um, folks, but I came to a conclusion. I came to the conclusion the government is— largely incompetent at keeping people out of this country. Um, and if you can't keep them out, then what's the point? Why spend this all this money, these billions of dollars, trying to keep people out when they can't do it? Let them come here, give them a green card, give them, you know, whatever information. They seem to want Social Security cards. Give them to them. Let them pay into the Social Security system. Many of them will leave and go back home and leave the money in the Social Security system. They'll pay taxes like everybody else pays taxes. The problem with this country isn't people coming here and wanting to work. It's the welfare system that says that you've got to pay to support somebody who comes here. That's the problem. The problem is, is that you've, you're you supposed to kick out money for somebody who's come here. Frankly, I don't think you should have to kick out money for somebody who was born here either. I don't understand the welfare system at all, and it incentivizes uh, laziness. Yeah, to me, people like Bob are the real scary people. They're the ones who, I mean, when we talked about, I talked about the police state that will have to be built in order to have some sort of control over the border. He said, what's wrong with that? He doesn't even understand what's wrong with the idea of a police state. He loves the idea of a boot on his neck, apparently. Let's talk to Dan listening in Franksville, Wisconsin, to the Mike 92.1 in Madison. Yeah, that's, a, that's called a uh, fake conservative over there, that man there. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny, in, in our state here, there's people that the biggest areas that they call conservative, these people will have government Anything goes wrong, they'll be calling the government immediately to solve the problem, but they hate big <laughs> government. But uh, there's a false narrative and st stuff here with uh, immigrants that come here, and this is sort of different, but you'll never lose the debate with people if you go along with this uh, uh, type of reasoning. Uh, first of all, uh, foreigners don't want to come here. They do not want to come here. Uh, why, why would anyone want to leave their country? They've grown up there. They've done everything. Uh, the only reason they want to come here for is because maybe a, a coup in Honduras where the CIA goes in to Honduras and makes sure that those corporations keep them people under their thumb as peasants, and then they make them so desperate they want to come here. How about interfering with the elections in Mexico and um, making sure that they have – uh, corruption stays good and alive down there for rich people because they have the money to pay for corruption, and then that forces people to come up here. So the policies of these people, of the fake conservatives, they create the policies for these people to be that desperate, having these dictators and crap all over the world uh, want to come here. And, uh, and and come into our country, but they don't want to come here. Well, it's an but interesting point, and I think that to some extent you could be right on some aspects, but obviously the U.S. government isn't picking the the rulers of every country in the world as it's much as they might like. not too far from that. As much as they might like to, that's that's not happening in all 180 or 90 or however many countries uh, well, there the, are out there. The, but the United States but, government claims more uh, sort of moral authority over uh, American country, you know, countries on the American continents as opposed to the ones around the world. So I'd say that they're more involved, especially in Central America. Um, I would also point out that uh, that conservative voters tend not to have an opinion about how other countries should be run. They just want them to stay the hell out. It's the it's the conservatives that are in Washington, D.C. that tend to support, uh, support this uh, war on drugs that gets exported and uh, the CIA's involvement in uh, other governments and that sort of thing. Thanks, Dan, for your call. Appreciate it. Toll free numbers 855-450-FREE. Let's talk to Connor listening in Virginia Beach to WNIS. Hi, Connor. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, go ahead with your thoughts. Good. Hey, all right, man. Y'all go, like, in a real good direction. I like the way you think about free individualism and all that. You were going good until you brought up the border, man. I just want to put one quick thing out there. Okay. There's a, uh, a just pretty much a, not just so much of a set, but there's more of a, uh, a guideline, I guess, when it comes to typical people coming across the border. There's a majority that are Jose the Gardener, you know, but there are some. It only took five to kill 4,000 people. 
you know, on 9-11. And I'm just saying. With Those people, people overstayed Syria, student visas. And the vast majority of people who are here, here legally, legally have overstayed process. visas. So hey, they've come here. Well, that's, that's, they've come through the system. Stand by, Connor. That's we can uh, talk to you about that here in a moment. Uh, because, you know, if you like uh, and appreciate the idea of individualism, then you should support the freedom of individuals to travel freely, right? It seems like a no-brainer to me. But there's more on the way here. Hour three's next on Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $230. Antiwar.com reports, deployed last week to the Yemeni coast on the pretext of the proximity of the convoy of Iranian cargo ships, whose destination was never known, the USS Theodore Roosevelt and a series of other U.S. warships have begun to leave Yemeni waters, returning to their long-standing position parked off the Iranian coast. The Pentagon insisted that during the deployment there was no communication with the Iranian cargo ships and bragged that the Iranian convoy turned away from Yemen before the U.S. warships did. The move away suggests U.S. ships won't be engaging any further in the naval blockade of Yemen, though so far they were only confirmed to have carried out a single boarding of a Panamanian cargo ship they falsely accused of having Iranian weapons on board. The Iranian cargo convoy remains shrouded in mystery, however, as it never went to Yemen and no one has ever publicly said where it actually was going. Though the U.S. is trying to present the ships not going to Yemen as some sort of military achievement, it was never more than U.S. conjecture that the ships were heading there anyhow. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports an Atlanta teen who burned over 70% of his body after two friends threw a pot of boiling rice on him while he was asleep is in a medically induced coma. 
Damon Clay, age 17, was hospitalized after two people who claimed he had stolen a video game console attacked him earlier this week while he was sleeping on a couch. Quintavious Barber, 19, and Malik Morton, 18, were arrested for aggravated assault and child cruelty. Family members said Clay was recently released from jail after a burglary conviction and turned over to a supervising nonprofit organization, but a minister who told a judge he would shelter Clay provided no guidance. They added that instead of a promised group home, Clay lived with an assortment of friends and relatives. Clay's aunt said he didn't have any supervision. None. Doctors at Grady Memorial Hospital said more surgery is to be expected after Clay is removed from a ventilator on Sunday. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. The Guardian reports Switzerland is the happiest nation on earth, but Nordic nations still take up half of the top 10 places on an exhaustive and increasingly influential index of global well-being. In the third world happiness report, now encompassing 158 nations, Denmark slipped to third behind both Switzerland and Iceland, with Norway, Finland, and Sweden also near the top. The United Kingdom is 21st, one place higher than in the second edition in 2013. The study ranks countries by a series of factors, some nationally determined, for example, per capita GDP and healthy life expectancy. Others are worked out through information gathered via Gallup World Poll, a vast system of surveys that began in 2005 and now covers more than 160 countries. The idea of assessing population by contentment rather than just wealth has proved influential and is promoted by both the United Nations, whose Sustainable Development Solutions Network publishes the index, and the Organization for Economic Economic cooperation and development. While the Himalayan Kingdom of Bhutan remains best known for its gross national happiness credo, David Cameron was another pioneer in 2010 instructing the Office for National Statistics to collate data on contentment. The latest index offers few surprises with the top nations. The first five are Switzerland, Iceland, Denmark, Norway, and Canada. The United States ranked 15th with New Zealand 9th and Australia 10th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Could dropping bombs on Afghans without warning from terrifying robot airplanes that fly themselves actually hurt America's efforts to stabilize Afghanistan? It's complicated. No, 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 not at all. Actually, I think we need to stay the course. You don't change horses midstream, and you don't stop uh, firing well, missiles from unseen death droids uh, soaring high above the clouds just because a couple of schools get blown well, up. I, we have got to find another way to obliterate this population. What about flaming bulldozers or 50-foot tall tanks? Let's yeah. do what we can for these civilians. I mean, why not name the drones Billy or Steve to make them seem less dispassionate. Oh, that is a terrible idea. Billy is a horrible name for a drone. They're now developing a 40-foot robot that actually looks more like an American soldier and also uh, sprays lasers out of his eyes. Well, at least Smart. that's a step forward. Hey, look, as long as it fires missiles and bombs with very little accuracy and zero Americans are at threat, I'm all for it. Good point. They Duncan. should give it funny, floppy arms. Yes. Oh, it should spray uh, candy out of its chest a few minutes before yeah, it yeah. starts shooting yeah. everything. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of this live Saturday edition. Plenty of time for you to call in toll-free to share your thoughts with us about whatever happens to be on your mind. We've been discussing Sheriff Joe Arpaio, the big, bad, toughest sheriff in America, so-called. That's what he calls himself. There's actually a picture of him standing in front of uh, one of these, oh, God, step and repeats or what they're called. So anybody watching the Free Talk Live cam feed over at cam.freetalklive.com, uh, you will see Mark sitting in front of our step and repeat. We have, uh, you know, this big banner, essentially, that looks very, very nice, and it's designed for photographs. It's the same thing you see all the stars kind of standing in front of at these, uh, you know, premiere events, for instance, with logo, logos of corporations, that kind of thing. Right. The, typically. Step, the step and repeat refers to the logos, the way yeah. they, um, you know, they sort of, they're set offside. Uh, off, uh, they look off like steps one. as you're looking at yeah. them, yeah. sort of. They kind of shape for, shape diamonds or whatever. 
And uh, and so what we've got are our logos. So we've got the Free Talk Live logo. We've got the LRN.FM logo. And the purpose of the step and repeat is to uh, brand, right? So as people watch the cam, they see our logos or we'll bring it to uh, an event like Porkfest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And then we'll you know take pictures with big name people within the liberty movement like Nick Gillespie from Reason. We'll stand in front of this thing and... You know, fans can take pictures in front of it. And so there's sort of this viral thing or this online marketing of people seeing those pictures and then maybe seeing our brand. Sheriff Joe's got one for Sheriff Joe Arpaio, the toughest sheriff in America. (laughs) That's what's on his step and repeat. I mean, this guy is all about Sheriff Joe. And for years, for decades, this guy has been uh, the sheriff in Maricopa County and has uh, used his power in, well, what some would say are very questionable and corrupt uh, ways. The article that we started from azcentral.com is talking about how he's now in court this last week, in federal court, for violating a judge's order. He was told to stop racial profiling uh, against Hispanic folks where there was harassment going on uh, on the part of him and his officers, where they were stopping people basically because they were Hispanic and then detaining them uh, because they were Hispanic. and He they couldn't con- prove their citizenship right away, yeah, and which he, I don't know if I could prove right away. Right. He continued to do that even after being ordered by a judge to stop. So that's the purpose of the trial, and it's still ongoing. Uh, Arpaio himself apparently took the stand on Thursday. We can continue with that story here in a moment, but you've, you've called in about this, and we want to go to your calls first, because that's what we do here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can also join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. The Arpaio discussion led to a larger discussion about uh, you know the border and freedom and uh, you know the rule of law. So these are all topics that we've uh, put on the table here, or you've put on the table, and we're going to continue here. I believe Connor is back with us. Uh, Connor, you still there? Hey, what's up? There we go. All right, so... Uh, all right. You're concerned about the idea of open borders. And I'd like to throw out to you real quick, Connor, that openborders.org has gotten together a bunch of economists, and they propose a one-time increase of two times the world GDP if we just let free people cross borders of free countries freely. And by that, I mean just let get rid of uh, the whole uh, you know, stopping workers at borders. So things. wait, what you're saying is the world will become wealthier if that Yes, the absolutely they will, because people who are currently can't work are in countries uh, you know where they can't get jobs they would come to countries where they could get jobs they would create wealth because that's how we create wealth we mix labor with resources okay well when that happens so wouldn't you think that most people would go certainly towards areas with the most money yeah even people who wouldn't want to work just to kind of get the welfare that those bigger places put out because that's the biggest problem that we have and if yeah. we didn't have that i wouldn't feel so aggressively against these people coming over. It's but absolutely the true. Of them have a lot of children, have a lot of families, and a lot of the families aren't working. There's probably only a couple of the people of working even age that are coming over here working, and they do put in well, great work. Well, that's speculation. Great we work. don't really know um, who's working and who's not working because they're not accounted for. But I will agree with you that there's a real problem when it comes to social welfare programs. Um, and the social welfare programs put a big uh, crimp in this. Any nation wants to have people coming there and working. That's a real benefit to the nation. But what nations, do, uh, but you know, the average person who's paying in taxes, they don't want somebody coming here who's just going to you know use the social uh, safety net as a hammock right like nobody wants that so i would propose if we want to implement uh, something that works is essentially making zones um, call them refugee zones i'm thinking detroit sounds like a good <laughs> good spot so let's have a you know let anybody who wants to come get a job can't get welfare. You will be ineligible, but you'll be given paperwork to show that you're here. Your paperwork will make you ineligible, but you can go to Detroit and you can work your butt off and make a better life for yourself as so many people did, you know, decades ago, even a couple of centuries ago here in the United States and make this truly the land of the free. That is a great idea, but I believe in American exceptionalism and we need to actually think of ourselves as a country of our own rights, as our own privileges and as our own state pretty much yeah we do have a lot of states in the country that necessarily don't agree with each other but we are one nation under god as i've seen american exceptionalism that, that means we, you believe that people in america are better than the rest of the world not necessarily better but i believe that we have we have privilege 
compared to other countries because we are a nation that has come together under great scrutiny and great, great, great problems. And we've overcome them. We've made something of ourselves as a country. And I believe that we do have privileges and rights that are better. You know, most of those overcomings and those those great things that you enjoy were created by immigrants, right? Not by people who were born here with the privilege, but people who came here who had never had it. That really what makes this country great is people who come here, not people who are from here. Yeah, come here with aspirations. I totally agree with you. Like all those Chinese people that just got in trouble in California for giving 80000 to to $100,000 to have their children here, those are people with money. Joe the gardener, or Jose the gardener that's coming over here with his eight children, he's going to work his butt off, but I don't know about his eight children. And I'm saying they go straight to the, not necessarily all of them, but the ones that find out about it through yeah. these left it, you're going to go someplace and get free money, too, if you're given the opportunity. Money. Yeah, absolutely. Not, I, that's not, you know, yeah, yeah, especially when you don't have it. And I agree that when they look over the fence and see these million-dollar homes in San Diego, they're going to want that. And I believe that most of them will work for it, but I believe they're going to have to go through a process to get well, there. Well, here's the I thing, Connor. It, you can't— you can't on one hand say that, you know, you've got a problem with welfare and then on the other hand say that you want to have a larger police state to try to stop people from coming here to take welfare. Because well, ultimately I think that should be the only country I should do is our only obligation as a country, our only government's obligation is to protect us. And I believe Sorry, that's a but lot you're wrong. The government has no obligation to protect you and I would suggest In that the you Google the Here's what I would suggest that you do, Connor. Do is our national defense. Connor, out, I'm sorry. I'm but you're sorry not being to... invaded by Jose the Gardener. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad no, news. I know this is hard to believe, but here's what I would recommend that you do. Do you have access to the you internet, there's Connor? An ISIS, there's an ISIS training camp. That's bullcrap. Just go look. No, it's look. Not. Yes, it is. That story is a hoax. No, it was fed to no, the conservatives not. so that you, so that you'd fall for it. There is not an ISIS training camp outside <laughs> of Texas. It's a lot easier for someone that goes and flees to go train in Syria, like oh, hundreds of Americans have done. It's a lot easier for them to get a flight back into Mexico and jump All over right, the so border Connor, and um, here, back so into America. Here's what I have to recommend to you, and you can either take it or leave it. But I would recommend that you Google. You have access to the Internet, right? Right. Okay, he, he, he hung up there. But uh, for those of you, and maybe Connor's still listening, who believe what Connor believes, that the government has an obligation to protect you. That's their one obligation. That's what they're there for. It says it in the Constitution. Well, it doesn't say that, I don't think, in the Constitution. But even if it did, uh, it doesn't matter now because the government courts, the Supreme Court in the United States, the top law of the land, Uh, if you will, has ruled multiple times. They've ruled over and over again that you, the government, has no obligation to protect you. Federal, state, local, none of them have any obligation to protect you. Now, that's not to say that the local cops wouldn't try to protect you if they were in a situation wherein they could possibly, you know, block you from being attacked or something like that. But if they don't, they won't get in trouble. Right, because you have have an an obligation obligation to pay them because this is how the rule of law works. The rule of law goes downhill. The people on the bottom have the obligations. The people on the top do not. The government has no obligation to you. You only have an obligation to the government. Well, they'll force you to do what they want you to. You don't have an obligation either because you never agreed to an obligation. I mean, an obligation is something that you've pr- presumably consented to as part of some sort of agreement. I don't know agreement. if that's the case. I mean, they just have ruled that you're obliged. Well, yes, they will insist that you are obliged. Right. But <laughs> they will they will insist it so thoroughly that they'll put you in a cage, and if you resist the cage, they will kill you. We're, there's more coming up at 855-450 free. Share your thoughts. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. 
Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. The live Saturday edition continues. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're going to get right back into your calls and thoughts uh, but, Mark, I know you wanted to share something real brief on this supposed ISIS training camp story. Hold that thought. We're going to get to it. But I want to let you know about the Pocket Power Plus. Because if you're listening to this show and you're an adult in America, there's a good chance that in your pocket right now there is a smartphone. And there's also a good chance that given that it's 9 at night Eastern time, 9.20 in the evening, that that smartphone might be dead at this point. In fact, it might have been dead as of noon. Just given, I, I know that earlier today, mine was cranking down below 50% before noon time, and I'd only been awake for a couple of hours. So it's so easy to drain our batteries on these devices. Uh, and you've got to have something to solve that problem. And you can't always get to a, you know, a power jack somewhere. If you're on the road or you're in an airport or something like that, you should probably look at the Pocket Power Plus. They can deliver; it can deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power. This thing's a serious battery. It's uh, it's a breakthrough in portable power technology. The Pocket Power Plus is a source of backup power so small you can put it in your pocket or in your briefcase or purse or the glove box of the car. You're going to want to have this thing with you. When you say it's a breakthrough, what's the technology that? Lithium ion polymers. It's okay. not your standard lithium ion. It's uh, ion. It's a, a different technology. Okay. 
And uh, so it's a handy device. It'll, it'll charge not only your phone, but likely your laptop as well. It can even, in some circumstances, jumpstart a car. And to prove it, they uh, include a full accessory pack with most of the adapters you'll need, including the jumper cables. So if you want to get your Pocket Power Plus for half price, you can go to this website, PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's Pocket Power Plus. 9.com and use coupon code FTL if you'd like to save even more. That's coupon code FTL like Free Talk Live at PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Uh, before we get right back into your calls, Mark, you wanted to share briefly, uh, our last caller was claiming there's an ISIS training camp in south of the border in Mexico. You said that's bunk. He said, no, it's not. Uh -oh. It's true. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. Right. I love those arguments. Um, I never brought this up on air because I don't like to promote stories that are bad, but I knew it was going around. So I was just going to wait until somebody brought it up. This is from 20, 21stwire.com. It's only one paragraph. I'm just grabbing it out of the middle because I think it's the important one. The following day, even Fox News distanced itself from the story. <laughs> Reporting that U.S. law enforcement agencies flatly denied that there was any truth at all to the allegations that ISIS militants had set up a training base in Mexico. El Paso-based local news affiliate ABC7 also contacted multiple federal agencies and border, excuse me, multiple federal border agencies. They all said the same thing. The report is unverified and there is no ISIS and Anarpara. Or Juarez. There you go. Let's talk None. to Paul in Indianapolis, listening to WIBC. Hey, Paul. Good evening, guys. How are we doing? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Uh, before I get to uh, the topic at hand, I'd like to thank you guys on behalf of all the liberals in the country for turning New Hampshire from a red to a blue state. Well, we're not liberals. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a, not a liberal. I'm, anyway, a, I'm a libertarian. I'm a voluntarist. I believe I'm an freedom. elected Republican. That. I understand that, but uh, since you uh, pulled away a few Republican voters, why New Hampshire's turned into a uh, Democrat state. You don't even know. I'm sorry, so, but you know, with all uh, due respect— Republicans are the majority of the House yeah, in New Hampshire. They're also the majority of the Senate as yeah, well. Yeah, but majority of the Senate, too. Um, New Hampshire may have voted for Obama in 2008 and 2012, but we had really crappy choices from Republicans, too. I'd like to point out, uh, Paul, and you know, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you really don't know what New Hampshire is like unless you live here uh, because the Republicans in New Hampshire are a little different from the Republicans elsewhere. The as Demo are the Democrats. The Democrats in New Hampshire are a little different from the Democrats elsewhere. A Democrat in New Hampshire is likely to be a gun owner. A Republican in New uh, New Hampshire is likely to support gay marriage. Uh, so things are a little bit unusual in this place. And New Hampshire tends to vacillate every two years between the Republican, between a sort of allowing the Democrats to rule the state and then allowing the Republicans to rule the state. So what you end up having happen here is, you know, two years, the Republicans are on, they pass some laws. Then the next two years, the Democrats are in the, the state house and they undo some of the things the Republicans did. And then they pass some of their own laws. Not enough. Then the Republicans get back in and then they undo some of the things Democrats did, and then they pass some of their own laws. So there's this constant uh, back and forth, bickering and fighting and removing of government that has been created here, and that's one of the reasons why no, New I, Hampshire has not been growing in government I, as fast as many other states. Take a breath. I come to New Hampshire every year for 20 years. I, I read about a lot of stuff while I'm there. I always come up in the fall to see the leaves. So uh, I've been coming up there for 20 years. I know a lot about New Hampshire. Oh, I mean, yeah? When's the last you time you went to the state house? I don't live there. Pardon me? When's the last time you uh, spent time at the State House? Don't spend any time at the State House. Oh, okay. I'm glad to see their State House. Why would I do that? I mean, I can read papers. Well, and I can talk to people. It's so. so I'm proud no, of I New Hampshire being a purple state without, because I've I seen. Been, I haven't been to my State House. I, but, uh, there Here you go. I mean, I, I only live 30 miles from there. I, I can see I why you wouldn't go. It's house. not worth the trouble to go to the state houses. Uh, Ian's protective, and I understand why he's protective. We're proud that New Hampshire's a purple state because there's lots of red states, and they're really not any, not that much freer than blue states. They're, they have all, similar problems. Republicans and Democrats are really just flip sides of the same big government coin. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer a Republican. I am elected once Republican. We got these guys up there, once we got these guys up there to Washington that I thought was going to change some things and try to stop what Obama does that uh, is against the Constitution, and then they just uh, have no backbone and uh, no stones, I'm not, a, I'm not a Republican anymore. I voted for those guys for a reason. I wanted them to go, go along with Obama. I would have just voted Democrat. would have been a lot simpler. 
So I'm not I'm not a Republican either. So what are you? What do you believe uh, now? I am a, I am a, I'm a conservative. What What's that mean? What does it mean to be a conservative? I believe that uh, we should have a limited government. I believe that we should have a sovereign nation where we don't just let anybody into our country that wants to come. So you don't uh, really you, believe you know, in a limited talk, government. You Do you want people. more? You, you talk about these people coming in. Uh, would you please stop talking over me like you did the last guy? I mean, I'm, I'll let you talk. I appreciate it. You know, these guys coming in here that's, that's going to do what you were talking about, uh, mow yards and uh, do landscaping and stuff like that, they're not going to add a lot to our GDP. That's just not going to happen. We used to have people come in here that were scientists, engineers. Uh, you that's know, really insulting. In yeah, it is terrible. Stuff like that. That's insulting. Yeah, that's insulting. No, you know, you say you're for the limited government. You don't. You don't really mean that, though, because you want to have a big border patrol, right? You want to have a bigger government in that area, don't you? We don't have to have a big border patrol. We could stop them with what we got. Well, how's that? We just don't do it. Why? We just don't do it. We just we just turn them around and send them back home. How many that's thousands of miles is the northern and southern borders? About two thousand miles. Not to mention the seaboards. What if you factor in the uh, the ocean borders? I'm not too. I'm not too worried about. I'm not too worried about Canada's border. Why? I mean, why is that? Are you point, racist? I'm not too worried about that right now. <laughs> well, what? I said, why aren't you worried about racist? that? What kind of talk is that? Why aren't you worried Am about I people coming in from Canada? I'm not a racist. What do you mean I'm not a racist? Well, why, do you don't think people because come here from Canada? Not, a lot of people's not. A lot of people's not coming down here from Canada. How do you know that? They don't want to come here. How do I know that? I read. Oh, I see. Well, well, I did you, have a, a I believe friend. everything you read. Apparently, I did have a friend that uh, was illegal from Canada and working here illegally. Yep. Uh, but I have, I, I would say that there's probably more people coming from through the south bo- southern border for uh, to work here illegally. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Thank you, Paul, for the call tonight. Uh, people who want to come here, they're going to find a way in. Whether it's uh, you know if you. Well, if you arm up the southern border, they'll come in the other ways. I would say that if you want more government in the area of military, in the area of border patrol, in the area of law enforcement, that that's, you can't claim to be small government. More coming up. Free Talk Live. Hi, John Huebner from Midas Resources. Are you tired of watching your hard-earned assets dwindle away? As government spending is out of hand and the Federal Reserve is creating in excess of $20 billion a week, are you tired of stockbrokers gambling away your hard-earned money? Is this market a setup for a crash greater than 1987? Too many of today's policies resemble those that led to the collapse of 1929. This is John Huebner, and that was me in 2007. And we all know what happened when the subprime credit bubble burst. By March 2009, the dollar lost 50% of its value. The entire U.S. banking system was on the verge of collapsing. Like all financial problems of the past, is history about to repeat itself? Call me, John Huebner, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 129, before it's too late to protect yourself. Will the oncoming catastrophe take all private IRAs, 401ks with it? There is a way to protect your hard-earned assets. Call me, John Huebner, at 1-800-686. 2237 extension 129. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We're back with more here on the live Saturday edition of the program. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you here tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online. You can get interactive in a variety of different ways. One of those ways is to uh, sign up for our email updates. You can actually go to news.freetalklive.com. You'll find the sign-up box there. Or if it's just on the front page of our website, you can scroll down. It's on the left-hand side there. Just drop your email address in there, sign up for it, and you'll get Free Talk Live emails at least weekly. Uh, we send out the weekly update, which has some of the top voted stories, as voted by you and submitted by you, on the front page of our website. You'll get that in your email box, as well as a featured video of the week, which frequently is a clip from Free Talk Live, but not always. And uh, in addition to that, other related items to the show that you might find of interest. So if you enjoy Free Talk Live, that's one way to kind of keep in touch off the air is to get on our email list at news.freetalklive.com. The news.freetalklive.com uh, page also has links to our Facebook and Twitter. So if you're not yet connected with us on your social network of preference, you can do that too. News.freetalklive.com. As we go back to the phones and the fun, let's talk to Susan. She's in Colorado. Susan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Hi, you're on the radio. Go ahead. I wanted to call about um, Joe Arpaio. Can you do me a favor and, like, back off your phone like an inch? Oh, sure. Sure. That okay. made a difference. Thank you for that. Go ahead. Um, he, Everyone that's traveled around Maricopa County for the last 10 years has been afraid of him because he has these tent cities and he has all the prisoners feed, like, once a day bologna sandwiches. And um, wear pink underwear. Yes, and he does. He to have that done to him from the contempt of a federal uh, court order. It would be ironic, wouldn't it, if uh, Joe Arpaio ended up getting locked up in his very facility? But that seems very unlikely cause obviously, because obviously— And I wouldn't wish federal, that treatment on anyone. Right. But he, we have temperatures down in the southern uh, part of the desert of 120. Oh, yeah. In it's, the, it's outrageous. And then they don't have access to water whenever they want it or anything like that. And then the clicker, clincher, that is that he hires a private investigator to um, investigate the judge's wife. That's right. You know, she didn't like him. And I think the problems with him stemmed from having Jan Brewer as their governor at the time. She filed a federal lawsuit on this immigration thing. And see, the difference is I, I heard what you said to those other callers. And up till five years ago, I stopped counting down in southern Utah the illegal aliens that we had. It was about 11 million or 11,000. And they bring them in in these uh, international landscaping vehicles. Yep. And they, they traffic the people that way. They traffic uh, females. They bring heroin into the area. And, you know, I differ with those. We need the Border Patrol because 
I used to. I'm not a racist, and my family members some are yeah. Hispanic. I think I here. think he, Ian really really discredits his case when he jumps in with the racism thing too quickly, and as he did in the right. last segment. But here's what I'd like to point out: that all this stuff that you saw in Southern Utah happened while the Border Patrol was fully funded and had all the people it needed to have. The thing is, is that we're not going to get anything different if we continue to do the same stuff over and over again. Many of the big businesses benefit from illegal aliens because they can exploit them. If right. I'm an illegal alien, well, if they I'm an illegal alien, I can't country. compete when it comes to jobs. This is really important. So if, if for They've instance, all the meaning labor jobs down here and there was no yes, jobs. Sir. And, you know, the, the big thing with this uh, immigration thing, the people that came through Ellis Island that came through, you know, it became immigrants. I'm a Native American. So my some of my family on my dad's side were immigrants that made whiskey and stuff. But my grandmother's family were Cherokee. So this has gone on. Joe Arpaio is uh, the type of mentality. My brother, James Walker, was killed by the Delta County Law Enforcement 2002, August 17th. And what you said, that they'll put you in jail and then they'll kill you, you know, that's the truth. Um, they don't. The same mentality, if no one stands up, you know, and I don't know how I'm going to vote. Well, next you can't have it both it. ways. I mean, you can't have, on one hand, critiques, valid critiques of an ab abusive, inhumane system, and then advocate that same system exists for the, you know, the people on the border and somehow think that that's not going to be applied to you, too. I mean, you've well, got internal checkpoints. Right now, Susan, there are internal border checkpoints that are within 100 miles of the northern and southern borders that are stopping wholesale every car that comes through there for harassment and intimidation. And and I thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. You can't be concerned about police abuse and then advocate for more police. I mean, the, the more of the status quo. Well, I guess you can if you're in well, that case. But, Mark, you were trying to make a point there. Well, I think that it's – okay, so what's really important here is to understand that um, – that I mean, both sides of the political sphere benefit from illegal aliens, all right, if you want to use that terminology. I don't like the terminology, but it's uh, it's what we got. So um, the, you know, the big moneyed people want illegal aliens because they can't negotiate the rate of their pay. If I am working for uh, Farm XYZ and I want to go work for Farm ABC and I tell uh, the, the, the head foreman of Farm XYZ that, hey, I can get uh, – 10 cents more an hour by going to ABC over here, he's going to say, potentially and likely, well, you're, if you go over there, I'm just going to call immigration on you, and then uh, you're going to get deported and you won't have any job at all. Mm -hmm. So you better stay over here where things aren't so bad. And when you don't have this freedom of labor to move from one location to another, you're going to keep rates low. Yes, they come in and they work the low-rate jobs, but... I'd like to point out that there have been many situations, uh, for instance, in Georgia, they tried to use, they, they drove all the illegal aliens out with uh, with draconian laws, and then they tried to use probationeers to do the work, and the probationeers were walking off at the threat of going to prison. They were saying, we can't do this work. We can't do it. We won't because do it. Well, they won't do it yeah. because their bodies aren't ready for it. They aren't uh, prepared for it. They can't do farm labor and just walk on to it. You have to have sort of, you know, work your way into it. You don't start a workout regime by going in and doing your full workout in the first day. And, you know, these people just aren't ready for it. Uh, well, they probably had worked out in jail because it's all you have to do. Um, but that's different than doing farm labor. Well, right. They weren't ready to actually work is what it was. Not that they couldn't work out. Not that they couldn't handle the labor if they wanted to. It's just that that's a lot of work. It's hard work. It's probably some of the hardest work in America is uh, is working out and you know picking fruit and veggies and things like that. Let's go to Ryan. He's in Madison, Wisconsin, listening to the mic, 92.1 WXXM. Hi. Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, are you are on you some kind of speakerphone? You, on a speaker phone? I, you yep. sound really distant. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Is it better? Yeah, a little bit. Go ahead, Marjorie. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I just wanted to say that, I, you know, I agree with you guys completely. Um, you know, it really bothers me when fiscal conservatives say that, they, that, you know, just like what you guys were saying, you know, that they want smaller government. But, you know, they say they're worried about government services and all that kind of stuff, but we're spending so much more to try to keep everybody out. I mean, we're spending just mind-boggling amounts more uh, to try to keep people out and also deporting people once they get here and, uh, you know, keeping them in jail and all that kind of stuff. And um, 
Don't forget the border checkpoints. How much do those cost? Every single one of those installations, there are, there are, I don't know how many of them there are, but there, there are a lot of them. And uh, there's some of them that are permanently installed. Others are movable. They'll move them around. Don't also forget on top of that, uh, the enforcement of these laws by ICE or whatever they're called, going into businesses, raiding businesses, and looking through their employee files, and then arresting their employees. This right. is incredible. This immigration service is a giant exactly. welfare program. Well, and they also, you know, this is another thing that people don't realize is that our country allowed immigrants, you know, almost without, you know, any kind of check or anything like that for about 150 years. That's right. Yeah. And they were allowed to vote, too. Relatively fine. Yeah, and we didn't have to spend all of this money to try to keep them out. Not only was everything relatively fine, as Mark pointed out, it was those immigrants who made this country what it is today. Yeah, those immigrants are our ancestors. So when people talk bad about immigrants and they'll say it's just illegal immigrants, well, you know, there didn't used to be a distinction. And you know what the cheapest option is? The cheapest option is to get rid of the whole immig- uh, Border Patrol apparatus, ICE, Border Patrol, the whole thing, give these people work visas and uh, a special kind of work visa that disallows them from getting government uh, welfare programs and let them go to work and build a better life for all of us. Ryan, thanks for your thoughts tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number, if you want to get in in the remaining moments, is 855-450-FREE. When we needed $5,000 for a medical emergency, a friend told us about Avant. They use their own risk evaluation software to calculate a personalized interest rate, one that works for us. The whole process took minutes and didn't affect our credit score. We've helped over 100,000 Americans get the money they need fast. And with Avant, you'll never pay hidden fees or be penalized for paying off your loan early. Right now, Avant will also give you a $50 Amazon.com gift card after your first installment is made on time. To check your rates risk-free and get this special offer, go to AvantOffer.com today and enter promo code 200 at checkout. That's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Again, that's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Loans are made by WebBank and by affiliates of Avant Incorporated. California loans offered by Avant will be made under financial lender's license number 603-K124. Amazon is not a sponsor of this promotion. Other restrictions apply. See website for details. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 100-foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a -a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. 
But make sure you get five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you're a liberty and freedom-oriented American, come to the third annual Arizona Freedom Fest at Shots Ranch Shooting Range, May 1st through May 3rd. Fun for the whole family. Lots of stuff for the kids and lots of great guest speakers and events for everyone. Food, music, shopping, and more. Speakers include Sheriff Richard Mack, Derek Grayson, Joel Skousen, and many more. Plenty of camping room at Shots Ranch. For tickets or more info, go to ArizonaFreedomFest.com. That's the third annual Arizona Freedom Fest at Shots Ranch, May 1st through May 3rd. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the radio waves. If you're already on hold, we'll do our best to get you in here tonight. If you are not and you want to join us, well, you should probably call tomorrow night. Because we are on live seven nights a week. so if you And you can bring anything up you want. Yep. So if we bring in show prep and you still want to talk about immigration, you no can call problem. in tomorrow and ding, ding. Anytime. Ring the bell. It's on. Well, yeah, we're, we're happy to talk to you about whatever you want. That's the point of Free Talk Live. So join us here uh, tomorrow night, 7 to 10 Eastern Time. Whether you're listening to us on the radio or internet or satellite, however you're listening to the show, podcast, uh, doesn't matter. You can still call whether you're listening live or not to participate with us. And uh, the number's the same every night, by the way, 855-450-FREE. But don't bother calling now because our lines are loaded up, so let's jump right back into it here. By the way, also want to remind you, if you want to help support Free Talk Live, please amp the show at amp.freetalklive.com. Amp stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's 5 bucks a month. You get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only Facebook group, and more. And, uh, and it helps us out because it helps us market Free Talk Live and get on more radio stations to spread the ideas of liberty as far and as wide as possible. And that's important because Free Talk Live is a unique voice. You're not going to hear this conversation on any other show. There's just nope. no conversation like this. Ian, you were on a uh, panel with a bunch of talk show hosts, said what the, <laughs> what they call that, the... Uh, the talk rumble. Yeah, the talk radio rumble. And you're the only one who took the position that free people should be able to cross the borders of free countries freely. It's true. I mean, Tom Hartman, the, the big liberal voice out there, agreed with, I can't remember some other Todd conservative. Schnitt. Todd Schnitt. that you're crazy. Yeah, let's go to the phones here and your thoughts and talk first to Steve listening in Auburn. Uh, hey, Steve, you're on Free Talk Live in New York. Hi. I just wanted to bring up a point about the immigration that I think the government has caused a lot of the problem in my area, there's numerous humongous, like, dairy farms that are corporations. Yep. And well, they're, most dairy so, farms are probably corporations, but go ahead. But uh, the Guatemalan population has grown a lot here because, mainly because the government made it so easy for, quote-unquote, Americans to sit home on the couch and do nothing. Indeed. Yeah, it's true. And it's a sad thing to say, but the age, everybody says young people, there's people my age, and I'm 48 years old, that'll sit home and just live off the government instead of work. Well, especially when yeah. the government makes it more profitable to sit at home and live off of their welfare checks than to actually go out and work, where you know welfare payments can can rival a low-paying job. I, whenever we bring up welfare payments, I like to point out that the the largest welfare uh, payment recipients out there are corporate welfare payment recipients. That's true. That uh, the government gives out a heck of a lot more money in back scratching and log rolling than it does to uh, people who are getting welfare. But I don't think there should be any welfare program, any programs at all. I think the government should be involved in that at all steve final thoughts go ahead um i was just saying i think you're right on the money and i appreciate you taking my call thanks brother thanks for Have listening appreciate the call tonight let's go to bozeman montana where bob is on the line listening to kmms hey, hey bob hey it's bob yeah I, I yeah i agree with that last thing you said exactly if the government were out of all the incentives to bring people in for welfare and so on <laughs> i think the problem would clear up uh pretty quickly but you know, historically, uh, the people that you know we were talking about earlier who built this country, who were immigrants, I mean, generally, uh, we didn't have all of the interwoven issues. And given what is right now, I can see why people are saying we need to do something about just free uh, coming in. And I can see why they say it, but I have a rebuttal usually for whatever the point is. 
Yeah, but I, I don't know what the, my rebuttal is to do what you say, get the government out. But how do we do that? You know, that's the, a good question. We, yeah, um, we got we got a bunch. I mean, you know, the history of the Fabian socialists, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we have Detroit people, to show for it. <laughs> they overtly told us why they're doing what they're doing, and all these people that think they're liberals that are doing that same agenda think they're doing it for a good purpose. But the people that orchestrated it and the people that are mongering off the basis of it have an overt intent to destroy the country. Well, I'm fine with destroying uh, the United States as far as the idea of it. I think it's a failed concept. It's time to go to 50 different states, 50 different countries. Secession, I think, is is, is a solution. I think, And I think you've asked one of the most I important questions. I think your question was really important. Like, how do we accomplish rolling back this government? Because the Republicans aren't going to do it. They had control for, what, six years back in uh, the aughts when George Bush was yeah. in? And they didn't do a damn thing to roll the government back. They made it bigger. Well, and the Democrats, yeah. of course, are making it bigger as well and so to me the best solution is to get the hell out of the united states now that's not an easy thing to do you mean secede to secede yeah. i'd still be interested yeah. in what a constitutional convention could do and uh to see how that would work out i'm not entirely ready to flush it down after i've uh, you know found out about these constitutional conventions but i think largely the that washington dc is just too big of a juicy it's not going to change well, it may or may, may not. To. Do you you don't think you can make a better run at the uh, the Constitution? I mean, it no is a two hundred something year old document. It's gonna it's gonna get butchered. I mean, it'll be even worse by well, the time you, the Constitution. That's because you don't understand what a constitutional convention does. You can a constitutional convention can't pass a constitution without getting two thirds or three quarters of the states to approve it. And do you think that uh, two thirds or three quarters of the states are going to, especially conservative type states, are going to approve things like you know we all have a right to health care and all that other stuff? They might. I doubt it. Yeah, that's the problem. There's this huge bottleneck, and just the media has just got too much control over people's minds. I Most mean, Americans want smaller government. Most Americans want a more, uh, you know, sort of conservative fiscal policy. Yeah, but the politicians want something completely different from what the Americans want. Bob, thanks for the call and thoughts tonight. I appreciate yeah, it. I Let's talk to uh, Char in Myrtle Beach listening to WRNN. Hello, Char. Hey. Hi, Char. Uh, I came into the conversation rather late this evening, but... I wanted to know what your thoughts were about, okay, you said you're all for open borders, not put, not dumping more money into that, but then how do you keep the likes of ISIS, al-Qaeda, from coming in and setting up cells in the United step States? Step number if one. Nobody yeah. is- Here's step number one. Get the military out of the thousand bases they currently occupy around the world and bring them back to the United States. Stop warmongering in other countries and destroying innocent people's lives and creating ISIS. Uh, It's the United States government that created them in the first place through their aggressive actions around the world. If the military wasn't uh, warmongering all around the world, there wouldn't be as much anger towards the United States. Don't you agree? Not really. I believe that they're descendants of the Assyrians that have always hated a democracy and free free uh, religion, free religious thought. Well, that's an so. interesting belief, but uh, what about the fact that when you kill innocent people, the people who are alive still who loved those innocent people will become radicalized after that and might just dedicate their lives to suicide bombings and killing other people in the United States? Well, I, don't you think that's don't you think revenge and vengeance is human nature in any religion in any culture? Yes, I do, and I think that if you get your child killed by um, you know some organization that you, the military and you blame them, that you're going to want vengeance and revenge against them. I suggest we get the military out, quit endangering our young people for no good reason, for no benefit except to super rich corporations and individuals. I mean, what do you benefit by people by people People with M16s running all over the Middle East. Nothing. Yes, absolutely I right. I don't either. I'm with you there, Char. I wish we had more time to talk to you about this, but we're short on time tonight. Thank you for the call. I want to make sure we get Jason in here uh, in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Jason, go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, well, um, you, you both have had some very good points tonight uh, along the lines that I was thinking. Uh, Mark, uh, the distortion of the labor market yeah. by using uh, uh, cheap labor. Distortion is, is atrocious. Okay. We need to put that. In. Distortion is a key word. Distortion. We need to stop it. And as far as our foreign entanglements, we need to stop those. Those. Oh, that's a complete farce. We need to stop it. 
Stop well, that. I'd, I'd and, take that uh, half of it, but I will point out that distortion is just a loaded term. What you're saying, distortion in the labor market, is free people being able to work with people that they wish to work with. A job, you don't have a job, right? Like, a job is an agreement between an employer and an employee. If one person in that agreement doesn't wish to do it anymore, i.e. the employer, then, um, you know, the job isn't there anymore. Yeah. I don't think well, that would take a radical change in the system we have, but yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, yeah, it's true, like a true freedom like based basis. But as far as like where, I mean, like the next step, I guess I'm more focused on the next step. Yeah, the next also, step would be to pull the United States military out of the thousand military bases around the world and to yeah, yeah. Uh, set up a program <laughs> where people can come here and work with uh, paperwork without getting uh, social welfare programs. I think that's the way to go. Well, we, pre we, preach, we, we preach freedom, but we don't exercise that outside of our borders. Or inside. Uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave you guys with that. Thanks, Jason. Let's go to JP in Keene, New Hampshire. JP, you got about 20 seconds, so go quick. Well, it's hard to jump in here on a off topic, but I've been wanting to call for a couple of days. I wanted to just uh, switch lines and see um, when it's okay, when or not, to call the police. Good question. Um, Let's talk about it tomorrow night. I'd recommend calling at the top of the show, 7 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow, because that's a question that's going to take a while to answer, and I think people are going to okay. have opinions about it. But we're out of time for tonight. See you online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. A report finds it's not okay to just start talking to people you don't know, and a monstrosity is created in the Frito Laboratory. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local newborn Nathan Jameson surprised the world earlier this morning by irrevocably losing all faith in humanity after just six days. Though he's not yet developed the capacity for speech, spokespeople for the six-day-old baby have confirmed he already knows that humans cannot be trusted and that most people lack self-awareness about their own destructive tendencies. While most people need around 30 or 40 years to truly understand that the vast majority of humanity is shallow and irredeemable, baby Nathan's convinced that he has seen all that he needs to see. People have been nice and even brought him toys and presents, but the fact is, Nathan knows they're all full of shit. And in this week's science report, botanists discover trees are all slowly trying to strangle each other. In other news, a fun-loving turtle is all business when it comes to feeding time, and a party-goer rolls a couple of fat burritos to pass around. This is the Onion News Network. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hardworking men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213 493 